up next from the Orange Bowl. Welcome to the Orange Bowl on a hot, steamy Saturday in Miami for today's rematch between the Hurricanes and the FIU Golden Panthers. It is an emotionally charged atmosphere because it's Miami boys against Miami boys, all presented by Allstate. The two head coaches knew this year, Randy Shannon and Mario Cristobal. They know each other so very well. They both played in Miami, have coached in Miami, and now for the first time are on opposite sidelines. An emotional afternoon for those two gentlemen. Hi, everybody. Doug Bell alongside the coach, Mike Gottfried. And, Mike, you've caught a lot of games, and this is a great place. What about today? It is an emotionally charged atmosphere, isn't it? It's a chance for FIU. You go to school at FIU, you look forward to this game. You have a chance to make big news. So many crossover stories. It really will be fun today to talk about those. I think a lot of people don't realize, Mike, how large FIU is. Uh, they only have, they've only played football for six years, but their student body, 38,000. That's the second largest in the state. It's a large university, and they're building a stadium. They have a lot of things going for themselves. And if they should pull off the upset today, big. it would be really big. Let's talk about the quarterback situation in Miami. Kyle Wright came in with all the press credentials in the world out of California. He's had his ups and downs. He's the starter again today. Kyle Wright, uh, timing couldn't be better for him because they throw the football down the field better with Kyle Wright. He gives them a chance in the offense uh, to get the deep throws, open up the run game. For FIU, clearly the defense is ahead of the offense at this stage of the game. The coach described Scotty Bryan as a buzzsaw. He's a fun linebacker. He better be a buzzsaw <laughs> because the defensive front is small. Miami's going to come in here with the idea of deep passes, but run the football at the smaller defensive front. Well, it's a hot, muggy, steamy Saturday afternoon. Shouldn't bother either of these teams. They're used to it. They grew up here in their own backyard. For the second year in a row, it's Miami against Florida International, and it's right here on ESPNU. Welcome back to Miami, Florida. Here come the Hurricanes. We're in the Orange Bowl. The Canes winners of five national championships. FIU, they've played only six seasons of college football. An interesting matchup, though, because most of the kids at FIU grew up in this neighborhood. They grew up cheering for the Hurricanes, and they go against Miami for the second year in a row. Here's what's on tap. Turning a negative into a positive. Of course, the big story last year, the brawl that broke out, 32 players were suspended. Mike Godfrey will be on the sidelines in the second half, giving us the coach's eye. It really is the worst seat in the house, and yet the coach is down there. New digs at FIU, new stadium debuts next season. And the Orange Bowl, Mike, you've called so many games here. This is the last season for the old Lost place. a couple here, too, and when I was coaching. But uh, a great place to watch a football game. Miami has a chance with this football game. If they can win here today, and they should, and beat AM on Thursday night. They're back in the picture. It is a short week for Randy Shannon, a gentleman who Sports Illustrated featured a couple of weeks ago. And if you read that article, it really was an introspective look at this interesting and intriguing gentleman who now has taken over the Miami program. We mentioned the weather 91 degrees, 57% humidity, a chance of thunderstorms later in the day. It's just typical South Florida weather. Hot. You better <laughs> have depth today be with your offensive defensive lines because you need substitutes here today. And we saw that across town at Dolphin Stadium where Miami or Minnesota is melting as they play <laughs> Florida Atlantic. Miami won the toss. They deferred to the second half, which is a little unusual, Mike. Uh, nowadays, with the change going back to the 30-yard line, teams are taking the ball. Doug, I think the reason Randy Shannon wants to play defense first, FIU has not been able to move the ball in two games, so he wants to put the onus on them. Alonzia Phillips, Dante Owens are deep for the Golden Panthers, and Francisco Zamponia will kick off the left-footed kicker. This will be Owens who fields it at the five, brings it to the center of the field and gets 
knocked down up around the 26 yard line. Not a bad return for Owens. And as you mentioned, coach, this Panthers offense has struggled mightily in the first two games. Yeah, scored 10 points in two games, averaging 1.4 yards every time they run the football. Wayne Younger, a redshirt freshman from Cocoa Beach, Florida. The coaches say he has a lot of athleticism. It's just a matter of getting some reps. Doug, a he's experience. a tough guy, too, because he's taken on two tough defenses, Penn State, Maryland, and has not grimaced. So Wayne Younger under center. Julian Reeves is their go-to tailback, and he gets wrestled down by Vegas Franklin. Our starting lineups brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods for FIU. Alex Zima, a young man who has gone crazy in the weight room. He's lost about 30 pounds. The coaches have fallen in love with him, and he anchors that offensive line. Xavier Shannon, by the way, is Randy's son. Greg Ellingson has a lot of potential on the outside, and we'll see that say that a lot about these FIU kids because they're young. Ellingson has a lot of speed. Second down and five. Ahmed Ned now is the tailback for the Golden Panthers. Ned takes the handoff. Spins out of one tackle, and I think he lost the yard. Tavares good in the middle linebacker, number 52. All fired up, makes the stop. For the Hurricanes up front, there he is, Calais Campbell. And coach, I know you love him. What a special talent he is out of Denver, Colorado. We'll talk about him today. Tavares Goodnew made that tackle. Finally getting the start now as a senior. Says he's not disappointed in his career if he can make this a special season. And Kenny Phillips, the All-American candidate. They're comparing him to Ed Reed and Sean Taylor. And that is elite company. Timeout, Mario Cristobal and FIU. Some confusion, which you see in a young team, Mike. Confusion, uh, rather take a timeout here, a big third down play. You don't want to make a mistake early. Cristobal, only 36 years old, That's was coaching with the Hurricanes timeout. last season. Timeout. Went to Rutgers for a few years with Greg Schiano, and he is the first Cuban-American head coach. Only Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern is younger. Cristobal was an outstanding offensive tackle here at Miami. And he really was a good assistant coach. Yeah, Gundy, uh, Mike Gundy, Oklahoma State last night. He aged uh, because <laughs> Troy State got him bad. Yeah, he took it on the chin. It's been a nice weekend so far for the Sun Belt. Troy knocks off Oklahoma State. It looks like FAU will beat Minnesota. And now Cristobal trying to make it a three straight wins for the Sun Belt. But he has the tallest order of the three. He really does have a tall order here. Third down and five. Younger has not had a good season throwing the football. Throws it up for grabs for his tight end. It is picked off. Hurricanes football. Kenny Phillips, who we told you about, gets his first pick of the season. And that was just set up perfectly for him. A perfect uh, call by Mario Cristobal, but Younger took too much time to throw this football back. You've got to throw it right now to the tight end. Kenny Phillips really did a great job of picking that off, studying the tight end. Watch the release right here. He has people in his face, didn't get enough on the football. Not a good decision by the young quarterback, and there's Kenny. Missed some games last year due to injury, but still was third team All-American. Javaris James with the first carry, runs into that undersized but active front for FIU. There's Kyle Wright from Danville, California. With a big day today, he can move up the charts. Career touchdowns. Past George Meyer Jr. who played many moons ago. Many. <laughs> Kyle Wright really has a great, has great timing here for him to start this game. Derek Morris moved too quickly, the right guard. Really tried to hustle out of there and lead the block, and he just jumped the gun. Prior to the snap, false start, 71 of the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. It's still second down. 
Jack Childress, our referee from the ACC, Andrew Bain, a gentleman who just couldn't pass any of the physical uh, drills that they ran during the spring as far as sprints. He's lost about 35 pounds, and the coaches were singing his praises this week. Sam Shields, Patrick Nix says he has the potential to be a big play guy for the Hurricanes this season. Just a matter of getting a little experience. Second down and 16. And the Canes will get those five yards back, but they won't need it. Javaris James breaks free down to the 16. Alonzo Phillips tripped him up. FIU jumped the gun, Mike. Yeah, I think so, and I think that play will stand. When you look at Miami, two tight ends here in the first couple plays trying to balance up the defense of uh, FIU. Offside. 17 of the defense that penalty is refused first down and when you have a small defensive front you bring in Miami brings in two tight ends they're going to get a helmet on the helmet on every play that was a 22 yard pickup for Javaris James ABJ they call him that's Edgerton's cousin first and 10 Time behind that big offensive line coach goes forward for seven yards. That's what they were hoping to do. That's the game plan. Let's look at the defense now. Brought to you by Dix. Roland Clark, undersized defensive tackle. He is very active, and we'll see what he does against that massive offensive line of the Hurricanes. Michael Dominguez, they compare him to Zach Thomas with the Miami Dolphins. Under six feet tall, but he's all over the place. And Alonzia Phillips, a young man who set out for three years, and he's back, and he's a track champion. Two tight ends now for the Hurricanes. Kyle Wright looking for that fade route into the corner, and it goes incomplete. Bad route on the outside. Kyle wrote right front for the uh, corner wide receiver. Not even near it. But that was Leonard Hankerson. Yeah. 6'2 guy, a freshman. 199, I'm sure they'll tell him on the sideline. Hankerson caught a couple of passes against Marshall in the season opener here. It's a good draw down right here where you run the draw, will spread the defense out. James right next to right. It's tackled quickly. It'll bring up fourth and short. Kyle Wright trying to spread them out. Gets the ball over the middle. Boris James, the game plan is get him the ball any way you can get it. <laughs> Zamponia, three for four in field goals, sixth year of eligibility granted by the NCAA. An interesting uh, kid, and we'll talk about his story. A left footed kicker misses that one. So the Canes had an opportunity after the turnover, but it goes awry. FIU breathing a little easier. 0 0. A long TV timeout. The mascot for the Hurricanes, a little antsy there, Coach. Yeah, he's antsy because he had a tremendous opportunity to get on FIU right away and blew it. He did blow it, so Wayne Younger gets a reprieve. The young quarterback, redshirt freshman. Bad mistake on that interception. Back under center. Quarterback draw. Runs right into the meat of that Miami defensive front. Let's go to the studio and Mike Gleason. And Doug, we take it to the swamp where Brandon James says, hey, I don't, I'm not going to leave it all up to Tim Tebow. This is what I called a bonus touchdown. Brandon James shaking and baking all the way down for a long touchdown pass. Gators strike first, and this is a final. A Mississippi State has defeated Auburn. Doug? Sylvester Crew. Big loss. <laughs> big win for, for Tommy Tuberville. Yes. Yeah. Oh, boy. South Florida last week and State this week. Look out. New quarterback for Auburn this week. Took Brandon Cox out. Cody Burns came in. And right up the middle again, Ahmed Ned, the junior tailback, had been suspended for the opener. Came back in the second game, averaging just over five yards a carry. That'll bring up a 
up third down and three. Ned, another one of those Miami kids. And that's what happened last year, Coach. A lot of emotion in the first meeting last year because these are all Miami kids for, this, for the most part. They, they've talked so much about the fight. There will not be an argument in this game. There has been a peace treaty, certainly, between <laughs> the two programs. He gets wrapped up. Throw for Las Vegas, Franklin. Franklin, a big play linebacker for the Hurricanes. Yeah, Vegas Franklin just waiting, sitting there, reading this counter by the quarterback. Not fooled, makes the play. Fourth-year senior Franklin has been around the block. Greg Cooper deep for the punt, fields it at the 40. Short punt, looking for a gap, and he finds one. Quick feet into Miami territory up to the 47-yard line. That was a 35-yard punt. One more time. The swarming Hurricanes defense just gobbling up the Golden Panthers early on. It's Bobby Benton. Lee, thanks. That's Javaris James taking the handoff, and he gets gobbled up. Daniel Shackleton comes up with a stop, big number 99. When you play FIU, they blitz all over the place. You're going to see a lot of big plays that they dug out of the uh, passing game. I expect Kyle Wright to have a big game, game, big game because once you blitz and you play man coverage in the secondary, you got a chance to hit some big plays here. Second down and 13 for Kyle Wright. Man, man again, here they come. Oh, that's picked off. What a tremendous pick off by Anthony Gator. Gator's first pick of the season, a freshman. You, you have what you want. Kyle Wright saw a blitz, he saw it coming, saw man coverage, had a wide open wide receiver. He's late giving the ball to Lance Leggett. Gator with a great job closing and picking the ball off. It was clearly underthrown, but a nice play by Gator. Underthrown and Kyle Wright not off to a good start here. Gator, another hometown kid, a bit fired up. Phil Galliano, the defensive coordinator for FIU, has to be excited about that. <laughs> Julian Reams back in at tailback. For FIU. Bernard Turner in there at fullback. Here's Reams over the left side. Here's what happened last October here in the Orange Bowl. First time the two programs met. And following the extra point, all oh, heck broke loose. 32 players were suspended. And Mike, this is really one of the ugly scenes of college football in the last decade. Ugly, and both teams have really done some things about it. Pete Garcia, the AD at FIU, showed a tape of the Indiana Pacers. Carlos Zambrano uh, fighting his teammate and said there'll be no, none of this here this year. Second down. Big hit there by Spencer Atkins. Well, he really drilled Reams that time. That's what happened last year. 19 players suspended for FIU. Two were actually kicked off the team. 12 players for Miami. Uh, it was just a, a horrible scene, but you're right. Both schools have taken steps to correct things, and I won't, you won't see that today. No, and Randy Shannon has told his players, if you're involved in the fight on the field, you're out of here. Zero tolerance. Third down and 10. Oh. Both running backs move before the snap. Mario Cristobal, who you saw in that video, actually he was coaching for Miami last year, and he was throwing players to the sidelines. He said, through our creative consequences, right, the snap. guys understand that, that they are better off dead than to violate team policy. I don't know about that, <laughs> but uh, uh, because when you're dead, you don't come back. But uh, I, I think Larry Coker last year and Don Strzok both got fired. And uh, 
probably had a lot to do with them getting this miss because of the fight. You have no control down on the sideline. Once that fight started, the uh, guys entered the uh, field. It's tough as a coach. Third down and 16 for Wayne Younger. Has some time. Goes about to join the range, and that ball's incomplete. Now, Ford International, under Pete Garcia, their new director of athletics, who had taken the job on the night uh, of that skirmish, came up with this videotape, and here's what all incoming freshmen at FIU and current athletes have to watch. Sportsmanship is essential for all of us because we are defined by how we treat others and character counts for everything. When you demean your opponent, you also undermine your accomplishments. So always show respect for your opponents and officials. Win and lose with class and dignity. Then regardless of what the scoreboard says, we're all winners when we display good sportsmanship. And speaking of that, a late hit out of bounds. <laughs> Timing is everything. Cooper uh, ran it out of bounds and then got hit late. So they'll tack on 15 yards to that. Hey, hey Doug, here's the thing right now. In this game, so far, with 5.56 to go in the first quarter, At Miami's the end of the play, there was a dead ball, personal foul. 29 of the kicking team had 15 yards and a first down. Miami's had great field position. Opportunities haven't taken advantage. That was against Desiree Johnson of FIU. So again, the Canes with excellent field position when we come back. No curb appeal. Hate the color. Oh, honey, this is it. Uh, what you got there is an infestation. A lot of life happens in your car. Conoco and 76 Quality Pro Clean Gasolines help clean your engine as you drive. The pink wasn't so bad. So you can focus on more important things. Conoco and 76 Quality Pro Clean Gasolines. Tuesdays on ESPNU, take a share in the summer house. All right, boys. Welcome home. As some of the country's best freshman football players live under one roof. Get over the line, bro. What they'll face will be tougher than any two-minute drill. Running out of that tunnel. Unbelievable. With the season coming to an end, don't miss another day oh. in the Summer House. Well, that was definitely an experience just to look around the stadium. Summer House, Tuesdays at 9 on ESPNU. Presented by Under Armour. What are you being? So now this DirecTV super fan thing is going to show all these NFL games in beautiful high definition. Well, let's all run out and get bikini waxes so that we look nice for our close-ups. Over 180 games in HD with Superfan, only on DirecTV. So this DirecTV Superfan tchotchke lets you watch an entire game in 30 minutes? There's no shortcuts in football, Buttercup. Football is hard work and groin pulls. Every play in 30 minutes. Shortcuts from Superfan, only on DirecTV. Winning is everything. Suddenly, it's just not true anymore. Not now. What matters is that we keep this program alive. They left this to us. It's on our shoulders. When you take that field later, hard on the line. If you do that, we cannot be defeated. R. Marshall. Coming to DirecTV September 18th. ESPNU College Football is presented by Allstate. Are you in good hands? And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods, every season starts with Dick's. Hey, the Flying Navy Leapfrogs. Got things going today in a big way, and Mike, I thought he was coming in a little too fast, but at the last second, pulled the brakes, he was perfect. And he knows what he's doing. Obviously. And that lit up this place. Uh, that smoke that was coming, about five of them came down in the field, and this place was full of colors. Greg Cooper over the right side. Let's go back to the studio, Mike Gleason. Doug, up in Orlando, UCF uh, christening their brand new stadium with Texas in town. Kevin Smith going in for the short score. Texas is right. UCF 7-3 over the horns, Doug. That is a gorgeous stadium, and what a deal to get the Texas Longhorns to come in for the oh, debut. Boy, George O'Leary, he has a chance today to make history, too. Nice trip for Texas fans, but uh, only if the Longhorns can go back to Austin with a victory. There's the pitch back to Greg Cooper. Left side. 
breaks one tackle, still going, and he gets down to around the 11-yard line. Alonzia Phillips brings him down for FIU. That's a burst. They said he has a burst, and that was it. Just a matter of time till they wear down this front of FIU because they're so big on offense, the offensive line of Miami. Cooper, uh, Mr. Football in Tennessee, 2005. That was a 15 yard pickup. Melrose High School, that's a famed high school in the Memphis area that has uh, had so many outstanding players over the year on the college level. Pitch back. Touchdown, Miami. Nope, he's out of bounds at the three. Cooper dove in, but he stepped out of bounds just before the dive. Cooper went to Milford Prep to get ready for his college career roommates with Javaris James and coach he's looking good and blocked really well good call by the official getting him out at the two yard line but Miami's offensive line they can do that on every play here and when you look at Miami coach and you're talking about down the line the key is right there the big guys they have oh, to perform solid. this season solid offensive line only given up, given up two sacks in two games it's Rochford, a converted long snapper. He's their center. The handoff to Cooper, who bolts his way in. Greg Cooper. He went right behind John Rochford and Derek Morse. Andrew Bain is right there. They give the guys up front credit. Yeah, the offensive line. Too much size on the uh, offensive front for FIU. Talk about boxes 6'6, 290, 6'3, 344, Bain. Zamponia with the extra point and the Hurricanes on top 7 0. There's Rochford. He was the long snapper, and Patrick Nix said they came in to the spring practice and said we need a center they went to Rochford and said you want to give it a shot and he said sure it's turned out to be a pretty good center he's one of those guys that usually played about eight plays a game and all of a sudden now he's playing eight a series last season for football the famed orange ball hurricanes hope to go out in a flurry despite that loss last week against Oklahoma they feel they can make noise in the ACC you win the ACC you go to a BCS bowl game well if the ACC is going to be good they're they're the only conference along with the Big East that hasn't got the extra slot in the BCS they need Miami and Florida State to be good I think the Hurricanes have potential. So does FSU. I called their game last week against UAB. They have a ways to go, though, FSU. They're going to have a way to go today. They're out to Colorado. So uh, Colorado, Hawkins, Dan Hawkins, has got that program turned around a bit. Floyd Moss, deep. Welcome our audience watching Central Florida and Texas, a lightning storm in the Orlando area. The Hurricanes have just scored against FIU and they lead seven zip. And it was a Greg Cooper touchdown run behind the big offensive line. We're live in the famed Orange Bowl, Miami, Florida. Doug Bell along with Mike Gottfried. And the Hurricanes are taking on FIU, separated by only 11 miles. And the rosters are just loaded with Miami kids on both sides. The coaches both played at Miami, coached together, Mario Cristobal and Randy Shannon. And you sense that this is not your typical FIU Miami game. It's a love fest. <laughs> there you go. It has certainly turned into that as we talked to officials this week. Ahmed Ned, nice run for Ned, the junior tailback. Bruce Johnson tripped him up for the Hurricanes. Coming up tonight on ESPNU, it's the Old Spice High School Football Showcase. Number one against number two, Miami Northwestern. Very close to the Orange Bowl, by the way, against South Lake Carroll, Texas. Cannot watch that one tonight. If you like high school football, 
Division I prospects are sprinkled on both rosters. Also tonight on the U, Hampton against North Carolina A&T. It's primetime college football presented by City at 10 Eastern tonight on ESPNU. FIU, Ahmad Ned, after that last carry, slow to get up, and Mario Cristobal, first one out. There's the big former offensive lineman for Miami. Here's the contact. Ned hits the ground. Uh, he gave the uh, FIU offense a spark last week against Maryland. And they hung it tough against the Turks. Week before, Mario Cristobal took his young team up to play Penn State. All sorts of special teams uh, problems led to that 59 nothing game. Hurricanes, most of that is on the ground, the 64 yards early on. You see Randy Shannon down there, very demonstrative, trying to get his guys in the right alignment. Once a defense coordinator, always. Oh, he's a defensive coach. And that should be a first down, Julian Reeves. Colin McCarthy on the tackle for the Hurricanes. Last drive. Here come the Canes behind that big offensive line. And number two is Greg Cooper, the freshman from Memphis. Four plays, 48 yards, a minute and 13. But you can't keep giving Miami good field position. Great field position. FIU's got to get some offense going in. Or it's going to be a long afternoon. It's going to be a hot, long afternoon. And it is hot. Well, Coach... Uh, We'll be down there in the third quarter, giving us the we vantage point up the head coach. We have a charge, timeout, FIU. That's their second timeout of the half. We're using timeouts. FIU only in, in their sixth year timeout. of competition. Don Strzok was the head coach up until he was fired after last season and replaced by Mario Cristobal. And they do have one player in the NFL. I mean, this is a young program in its infant stages. Antoine Barnes, linebacker for three years at FIU, was a fourth round selection. And he made the Baltimore Ravens roster. That kick could play. He blitzes real well off the uh, corner in this college table. Mario, good play. Looks like he still plays. Cristobal, after he graduated from Miami, he went through the Secret Service program and wanted to be a Secret Service agent. And they actually, on the day they called him and said, you have passed, we want you to be a Secret Service agent. That's when Miami called him and said, we want you to be a graduate assistant. Pass out to the tight end, Eric Kirchenberg. On first down, maybe a yard gain. Again, that's Colin McCarthy on the stop, wearing Dan Morgan's number, 44. Morgan was an All-American at Miami. And McCarthy says he feels honored to be wearing that number and plays a little like Dan Morgan. Yeah, Colin McCarthy's very active. He's a blue-collar guy that's going to work sideline to sideline. He'll be the next All-American here. Just a second year man from Clearwater Central Catholic on that Ned back at tailback. For FIU. Ned with the carry over the left side. Had a hole momentarily, but it closed quickly. Willie Cooper, who's getting the start of strong safety, came up to make the tackle. Again, we talked about the proximity. And the closest D1 schools as far as football, Houston and Rice. The Tar Heels, the Blue Devils are second. Then comes FIU, Miami. Xavier, Cincinnati, actually the closest of all schools, but Xavier does not play football. Used to in the 50s, 60s, 70s. And if you're wondering about USC, UCLA, it's about 25 miles or so. LA is a big city. Younger escapes the wrath of Calais Campbell. And scampers for a first down. Tavares Gooden on the stop. That was all Younger. Nine-yard pickup. That's what Younger can do. And he's tough because here's a guy that's played against Penn State's defense. I think they're very good. And last week against Maryland, who's not bad, scrambled a bunch we have last week. Fouls. 
We have a dead ball personal foul, number 89 of the offense. A dead ball personal foul, 27 of the defense. Those fouls offset. The down and distance is unaffected. That's a first down. So offsetting penalties against the two schools. Some extra pops there at the end of the play. And the officials obviously are calling things pretty close. Maybe not a love fest. Yeah. <laughs> that peace treaty we talked about yeah. could have some problems. Broken. Randy Shannon looks on. And what a serious guy he is to talk to. Serious about life and his job here. And Mario Cristobal is sweating through that shirt, man. I tell you what, it's a hot day to be wearing a shirt and tie on the sidelines. That's Reams back in the game. Boy, he is. That shirt is going to be a sopping mess by the end of this one. Maybe at halftime he'll change it, Coach. I don't know. I don't think he'll be able to wear that again. No. It's run. But, <laughs> but what he's worried about is how to control Calais Campbell, the 6'8", 280-pound defensive end. He has not been able to control him. That's Ned. Over the left side goes past Campbell. Sometimes Campbell's so active he runs by the play. Tavares Gooden on the stop. Another tackle for the middle linebacker for the Hurricanes. So far so good with FIU because they'd like to shorten this game. They got this quarter pretty go pretty uh, good shape here. Running the clock down, moving the ball now, keeping it away from Miami's offense. First of all, played in that 92 team that lost to Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. Blocked for Gino Toretta that year. Oh, that was nearly picked off. The tip goes for a completion. Big number 89, Moses Hinton was right there. Looked like Kenny Phillips had a shot at it. Flag down, back to the line of scrimmage. Now number 24. There's the deflection. Great play by Hinton, but all for naught. This will go against FIU. Number 76 of the offense, a chop block. That's a 15-yard penalty. Previous spot, repeat third down. Brad Surwe, this freshman center. Watch the chop there, coach. Yeah. A good call by the umpire. And the umpire's right inside. He sees that. He's watching the five interior offensive linemen. He spotted that right away. So it's third down and 20. A dangerous play going after Calais Campbell Lowe. That's the end of the first quarter. And the Hurricanes on top of FIU after one quarter, 7 0. Randy Shannon likes what he sees so far. FIU trying to milk that clock, make it a shorter game. It's hot, it's humid. Pretty good football game in the Orange Bowl. Number one. South Florida is such a wonderful place to visit. Mike, it's almost like we've been on vacation this week. Of course, we've been watching football teams practice, talking to coaches, but you always have to go to the water a little bit when you're in Miami. Younger, breaking free. Getting back to the original line of scrimmage, Kenny Phillips came up to make the stop. So it'll be a punting situation for the Golden Panthers from the Sun Belt Conference. Younger showing some yeah. quick feet. The penalty really hurt FIU. Younger with the quarterback draw looks to uh, make some cuts. Kenny Phillips with a good low tackle. Greg Cooper deep for the Hurricanes. Chris Cook will kick it away for the Golden Panthers. Just got it away. The left-footed kicker, Cooper, will let that bounce. And that is going to go out of bounds inside the two-yard line. In fact, they mark it out at the one. Great kick. <laughs> that was a superb kick, a 53-yard punt. No return. Let's go to Mike Gleason in the studio. 
All right, Doug, uh, the Oklahoma Sooners home against Utah State, and Sam Bradford remains hot. Yeah, him and Malcolm Kelly starting when they finished last week. Touchdown, Kelly. 14-0 Oklahoma. Brandon Orr for Virginia Tech back. Trying to forget that last week blowout. In for the touchdown. Hokies up 21-7 on the Bobcats of Ohio U. Doug? All right, Lee, thank you, Oklahoma. Bouncing back okay after that game against Miami, huh? Sam Bradford, uh, a talent. They look very good. Right up the gut, Javaris James for the Hurricanes. Actually, that was Kyle Wright keeping it himself. Quarterback you know, sneak. You know, it's interesting, Coach. We were talking to Tim Walton of uh, Miami, the defensive coordinator, first year now. And we said, Coach, what was it? The Oklahoma game, just a matter you ran into a buzzsaw. And he said, well, look at the tape. It was a matter of three plays. <laughs> Made the difference. That's an optimistic coach. Well, you always look back. And there are some plays that turn the game around. But I, Kirby Freeman was the starting quarterback last week. Kyle Wright chosen to be the starter this week. Fought for his job. His family told him, don't let anybody see your disappointment and not being the starter. There's Patrick Nix with the Miami hat on, the new offensive coordinator for the Miami Hurricanes. Before that, you saw uh, Tim Walton, so a new coaching staff for Randy Shannon. They're all right there in the booth. In fact, they're one level above us here. In the old rusty press box at the Orange Bowl. All right, second down and eight. That time with James. He gets wrapped up. James maybe yard, Alonzia Phillips. And speaking of Patrick Nix, who was at Georgia Tech, took the job with Randy Shannon. His claim to fame happened back in 1993, Alabama Auburn. I don't know who was on the call, but let's listen. Season has not completed a pass all season. Lobs one up to Frank Sanders. Completes that one, touchdown Auburn. And Auburn went on to have it an 11-0 season. Could not go to a bowl game because of probation. But as Pat Nix told us this week, uh, that changed his life. That who, play. Who was that guy that said, oh, brother? I don't know. Uh, he was a heck of a good announcer, though. I'll say that for him. Over the middle, wide open. Darnell Jenkins. First down, Miami. Robert Mitchell on the stop for FIU. That goes for 16. Again, when you play against a defense, plays a lot of man coverage, your inside receivers cross them. Cross them and try to get uh, one of those guys rubbed off. Good protection by the offensive line. Gives Kyle Wright a chance. And against man coverage, when you have time, crossing routes are great. Jenkins. Terrific speed, had a knee injury last season, and he's bounced back in a big way. Kyle Wright, when he gets his feet set, he's dangerous. That time, he takes off and runs for five yards. Back to the studio, Mike Gleason. What's happening with the Wolverines and Irish? Well, Doug and Coach, Wolverines 0-2, of course, but they do have Mike Hart. Yeah, Mike Hart, talk, Hart can't talk to talk, so he's going to run to talk. Guaranteed to win, he's in for his second touchdown. 17-0, Michigan, Doug. I saw Mike Hart's press conference last week. His eyes, I knew he was going to play today. You'd like to have 50 Mike Hart's. Certainly backing his coach, Lloyd Carr, who's under the gun. In the backfield again. That's James going forward for another first down. Ain't no offense for Notre Dame. None. Hey, their band can't even play the fight song. They have to play before the game, and at halftime, they're not getting any TDs. <laughs> hey, there's that offensive line coach. You like him, and I like the active. John Rochford got out to lead the way. They move for big guys. Good center, and uh, really, this is a very good offensive line. Oklahoma made this team look bad. All right, two straight first downs. That's Tavares James flag down on the play. Mike Dominguez got in there to make the stop. And Therese McRae also in the play. Check the flag now, thrown by the referee. 
We have an illegal shift. Right tackle was going down in his stance while the man was in motion. All right, so that sends Miami back five. Looking at that Miami offensive line, Andrew Bain is number 72. We have coach. an illegal shift. Right tackle, the offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. That's Reggie Youngblood. Bain, though, a young man from Pompano Beach, weighed about 350 in the spring, and Randy Shannon has his guys won, run 16 straight 110-yard sprints. You have to run it in under 18 seconds. You have 45 seconds to breathe in between. He couldn't do it. And so he lost his starting job, came back in much better shape. He's lost like 30 pounds. He was bound and determined to get his job back. He'll lose some more today. <laughs> that's, that's tough when you're 350 running those spins. James goes over the left side behind Bain and Jason Fox. Gets that five yards back. You talk about the offensive line. Derek Morris, 6'4", 320, the right guard. Also, it's considered by the coaches the heart and soul of this team. He's a leader. He's the guy that really steps up. There you see Morris, that's the big man you were talking about, Coach 320, a senior out of Fort Myers. This is a big offensive line. Second down. In time, wide open, James. First down, Miami. Check that Darnell Jenkins came across his second grab of the day. If you're going to play man coverage, you're going to get crossing routes because it gives a receiver a chance to run away from the DB. You see the crossing routes right there and you see the wide open catch. A lot of room. Kyle Wright, this is like picking chicken. <laughs> When he gets his feet set, he's dangerous. It really is. Came here, ballyhooed, and uh, everybody was talking about him and not had the kind of career we thought he would have. James puts his head down, pulls forward. Let's go to the studio, Mike Gleason. Hey, Coach, talk about picking chicken. I know inside the polls Monday, you picked this as your upset special. FAU Minnesota, Rusty Smith rolling right, coming back left. The Ivory Edgecombe takes it in, 42-38, Florida Atlantic, and Tim Tebow continues to impress. Tim Tebow throws a pretty pass, perfect spiral with a Raleigh Cooper in end zone for the touchdown. Nice pick, Coach. Not over yet, Mike. No kidding. That Minnesota game flags down the play. That ball is thrown up for grabs, and it falls incomplete. I appreciate Mike thinking about me oh, inside the pose. We had a great show the other night. Fun. There's still lots of time in that game. Oh, no, there's a lot of time. Uh, Howard Snellenberger's got to kill some clock. Offside, 98 of the defense. That's a five yard penalty. Repeat the down. Jack Childers from the ACC. Veteran official. In fact, if you watch a lot of ACC action, Jack does a lot of the big games. Second down and two now for the Hurricanes. Kyle Wright from the gun. Greg Cooper, who scored the first touchdown, lines up to his left. Cooper with a handoff. First down. Down to the 34-yard line. Matt Garris, the tackle for FIU. And we need to tell you about our red hat. This gentleman is Joe Underwood. He's the one who tells you when it's time to play with the TV. And he was recognized this week as the USA Today World Teacher of the Year. He teaches radio and TV at Miami Senior High School. His kids absolutely love him. And Joe loves the game of football. That's great. Joe, congratulations. ESPN will hire you. <laughs> right. With pressure. Just throws it out of bounds. Cody Pellisher was right there putting the heat on him. We need to recognize more teachers. There he is. Yep. Good looking, Joe. Look up here, Joe. He's working hard. And he'll go back to his students next week and say, hey, here's how a Major television broadcast works. Todd Ray is our producer working with him. Writing a lot of things down on that pad. 
It's all for next week. It's a test. Yep. Kids will. They better be watching this game. Hot quiz. 11th play of the drive. Kyle Wright in and out of the hands. Of De Leon Far. Getting a little pesky down there. That's Matt Garris. Getting a little excited on the hit. Kyle Wright again. Mia waited too long to throw this ball. Didn't set his feet. Should have been caught. Receivers have to step up here for Miami. That's the one area they got a lot of guys legged. They got shields. They got a lot of press, but they have not performed. That's what Patrick Nix told us. He's looking for a big play receiver. He's got guys he, he thinks has potential. They haven't come through yet. Here comes the blitz. Boy, they're sending everybody wide open on the outside. Is Greg Cooper he couldn't keep his feet in bounds. He's out of bounds at the 13. First down, Miami. Man coverage. You got a back in the backfield. It's going to come out of the backfield and not get picked up by the linebacker. Cooper comes out of the backfield. Linebacker sitting inside and did not come outside to cover Cooper. Wow, that's too easy. That was easy. 21 yards right to Cooper. Cooper in the backfield now. He's been tied at 4-4-3 in the 40-yard dash. That's scooting. Takes the pitch, tries to show some of that speed. It gets wrapped up. No chance to break free. Anthony Gator was there, along with big uh, Daniel Shackerton. God will like to fight in FIU. They're really playing as hard as they can play on defense, giving up a lot of pounds and a lot of field position. Their offense has not controlled the ball. They've been on the field a bunch. Second and 13. FIU digging in. Sun is back out. It is steamy here in the Orange Bowl. Here comes another blitz. Cooper right up the gut for four yards. Let's go to the studio and Mike Gleason. Got the update from Orlando, Texas has regained the lead. Coke McCoy reads the defense, throws the strike to Mike Jones for the touchdown. 10-7 and the Hokies of Virginia Tech found that fifth gear finally against Ohio University. Kenny Lewis again, 44 yards this time, 28-7 Hokies on top. Doug? All right, new quarterback for Virginia Tech, showing some speed after that shellacking at LSU a week ago. We are live in the Orange Bowl, the legendary Orange Bowl. Last season, they'll play football in this building. Doug Bell along with Mike Gottfried, the coach who coached here, has called some national championship games here. I just think it's kind of cool we're in the booth where Kurt Gowdy and Aldi Rogatis called the Jets' Colt Super Bowl in 69. Not good memory. Please here. reset the game. We lost the game on the one-yard line on this left end zone. We had the ball with 26 seconds to go against Howard Snellenberger. Had a chance to win, didn't. But I'm waiting for Mike Gleason to give me that final. <laughs> uh, the memories here. I mean, as a kid growing up in South Florida, I came here a whole bunch with my dad, who was a sports announcer. As he interviewed Don Shula and company. The place hadn't changed much. That's one of the problems. <laughs> Kyle Wright over the middle. Goes to big Chris Zellner. He gets tripped up at the 10-yard line. Boy, Kyle Wright took a hit and delivered this football on time, but he took a shellacking. Watch Kyle Wright. Sets up. He hit. did take a pop, Coach. That was Jonathan uh, Bettencourt. Bettencourt. Yeah. 279 pounds. Francesco Zamponia missed one field goal already. Missed from 27 yards. And it's good. Zamponia puts the Canes on top, 10-0, on a hot Saturday in South Miami. Are you the ultimate sports fan? Verizon and ESPN360.com challenge you to prove it. And the winner will drive off in this tricked-out tailgating machine. 
plus 25 grand and bragging rights to food. Go to ESPN360.com on Verizon Surround and compete every day to be the king of fandom. And watch thousands of ESPN sporting events live online. Take the king of fandom challenge. Log on to VerizonSurround.com slash sports today. Hello? Mrs. Anderson, this is Mark Brown. I'm from the collections department of... Hi. Listen, I'm sorry I haven't made my payment yet. I'll, I'll, I'll get it in as soon as I can. Maybe you should call in charge. They'll work with you and come up with a solution that's right for you. When life hands you a little more than you can manage, call In Charge Debt Solutions. We're a nonprofit company that puts people back in control by helping them manage their debt. We'll stop the collection calls and we'll help lower your interest rates so you'll have one affordable monthly payment. Call In Charge today. chest and cut abs with the perfect push-up. The perfect push-up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the perfect push-up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees, just like in a punch. All the energy of a push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it, to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle-building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. You'll be ripped in no time. Get big fast. Call right now for the perfect push-up. Call 1-800-543-0427. Smiles on the Miami sidelines as they lead FIU now 10 0. And the Hurricanes will kick off Randy Shannon. You'll never see him crack a smile, Mike. That's just not his MO. No, he's a good, solid football coach that bleeds Miami. I think he's happy. You just can't tell. Dante Owens, Alonzia Phillips deep. And Zamponia will kick off. Does all the kicking chores for the Hurricanes. A short kick. That will bounce. FIU will have decent field position up around the 27. When we come back to the Orange Bowl, we'll talk to a man who knows all about Miami, and now he's at FIU, and he hired that man. That's next. Nissan engineers know the backbone of any truck is its frame. That's why the Nissan Titan's frame is fully boxed. Unlike competitor C frames that are prone to flexing, our box frame is the strongest truck frame we've ever built. Just one more reason is the Titan of trucks. The new 2008 full-size Nissan Titan. Now get up to $3,500 Nissan cashback or 1.9% APR financing. Attention football fans, gear up for the season like never before with this NFL Performer Jacket with the logo of your favorite team free. Plus this NFL Collectible Football free. That's right, get this team choice NFL Jacket free when you order 56 issues of Sports Illustrated at only $1.59 each. Save 65% off the cover price. Use your credit card and get this NFL football also free. As a special bonus, order at SIOffer.com and get this SI gym bag also free. With SI, you'll get the sharp NFL insights and analysis, spectacular photos, and coverage of all your favorite sports. The SI Fantasy Football section, the must-have preview issues, and the sizzling hot swimsuit issue. And this team choice NFL performer jacket, free. Use your credit card and get this NFL football also free. And if you order at SIOffer.com, get this SI gym bag also free. Call 1-800-234-9400 now. Call 1-800-234-9400 or visit SIOffer.com. I used to suffer from acne on my chest and back. The pimples were painful, unsightly, and embarrassing. 
But then I started using Panoxyl Foaming Acne Wash. Panoxyl Foaming Acne Wash is a treatment that works two ways. Its rich, creamy lather gently foams away excess oil from skin to cleanse and unclog pores, while the benzoyl peroxide medication works to kill the bacteria that cause acne. Enjoy healthy, clear skin with Panoxyl Foaming Acne Wash. Panoxyl Foam from Stiefel Labs is available at CVS and Walgreens. South Lake Carroll puts its 49-game win streak on the line against top-ranked Miami Northwestern. Tonight at 7 Eastern on ESPNU. Hurricanes lead FIU 10-0, and there's a good look at the legendary Orange Bowl. Certainly antiquated. Uh, this is the last year they'll play football here. Miami goes to Dolphin Stadium. FIU has a brand-new stadium they'll move into next year. It's being built. Pete Garcia, the AD, joins us now. And Pete, uh, exciting times for FIU, isn't it? It is. It is. Building the new stadium, that's going to be exciting right on our campus. And that's the first phase that uh, takes us to 18,000. And eventually, we're going to get to 45,000. Yeah, I went over to campus, and I saw it. A lot of steel girders, a lot of dirt uh, being moved around. Uh, and the campus is absolutely gorgeous. There's the handoff to Dante Owens. And we'll look now. There's the uh, artist's rendering of what it will look like when it's eventually uh, finished. That's the first phase. Mm -hmm. And actually, it'll have an upper bowl that will take us to 45,000, but we got to be in there playing next September, so there's not a whole lot of time before we're in there because obviously the Orange Bowl's not going to be here, so we're not going to be able to play here next year. We got to play September right up there. Yeah, you'll have uh, the sky boxes and you'll have all sorts of uh, places to go for the students and that sort of thing. It, it's we, we it's have going to be great. Absolutely. We got 1,400 club seats and uh, we have 19 suites. We have a Panther Club and eventually we're going to have a student services center in there, which is going to house enrollment, financial aid, and admissions. Second and 10. Andrew gets off to Ahmad Ned, a flag down on the play. Ned gets taken down. We'll look at the amenities uh, that Pete mentioned. And, Coach, I know you, you like what you see, don't you? I like this stadium. I like what I see uh, Pete's doing there. He's getting this. He's got a young football coach. He's got a young football team. I think, Pete, you're in the right direction. Well, Mike, the, way, and the one thing that we definitely do have is we have a lot of talent down here in Florida to pick from. So Coach Cristobal and his staff are doing a great job recruiting. And uh, the formula is easy. You hire good coaches. They get good student athletes. And uh, eventually you're going to win in the classroom and on the field. How about... Florida, Miami, FSU. Holding number 55 of the offense. That penalty is refused. Third down. Schedule in the future, Pete. Well, next year I know we uh, we open up at Kansas. We got Iowa in 09. I know we go to Florida and we go to Alabama. So uh, yeah, we, we don't mind playing uh, the big teams. Uh, obviously, if you want to get that good, you got to play them. And uh, so we're definitely doing that. Miami, will you come Miami, back? Miami, we're going to we're going to talk about it. Uh, uh, Paul D and myself have talked about it. Talked about it with President Shalala. So we're going to continue to play, uh, talk about it because we play in every sport. Third down and nine. Younger will go down and get sacked. Flag down. Big Eric Moncour looks like he grabbed the face mask. That could have been an inadvertent a five yarder, which will not give him a first down. We'll check the call. A lot of pressure there, Coach. Yeah, younger, bad snap. First of all, there's the face mask on Moncour. Younger, a tough young quarterback. I like him. He, he's a he's a freshman and uh, he's getting his experience. Uh, but he's a good athlete and he's got a good head on the shoulder. I want to go back to the Miami game because I think it's important. You're this close. Personal foul, face mask, number 94 of the defense. That's a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. We talk about travel all the time. There's no reason why you shouldn't play. Last year, the fight, everybody talked about that. You guys have done a great job. Miami's done a great job. They need to play, you guys. Well, I, uh, I definitely agree, and we're nine miles away from each other. Uh, uh, one out of every two college graduates in Dade County is from FIU, and obviously between us and Miami, uh, we control the market down here, so it's good for the fans, it's good for the alumni, it's good for South Florida in general. Flag down in the play, again, Ahmad Ned goes over the right side, and a late flag comes down as well. You know, Peter, people don't realize, and we talked about it off the top, you have 38,000 students, only the University of Florida has more in the state of Florida. Uh, I mean, really is a gold mine down here, isn't it? Absolutely. We're one of the top uh, 20 schools as far as uh, student enrollment is in the whole country, and we have over 110,000 alumni just in South Florida. So, uh, like I said, uh, the stadium's going to be huge to, to get our own uh, students and our alumni to come back, and they just haven't had a football team. They, uh, you know, six years into the making, and now Division One. So, but they're 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 hungry. They're hungry for a Division One football team, and uh, obviously we just got to get better. When you hired Mario, 
What we was... have an illegal formation on the offense, less than seven players on the line of scrimmage, five yards, repeat the down. What were you looking for in the head coach? Obviously a coach that knows the game, and uh, then a head coach that's a disciplinarian, and a, and a head coach that can recruit. He could do all those things. Uh, he's, uh, he believes in discipline, uh, he's a relentless uh, worker, and he's put a great staff together. So the formula's easy. You hire good people, and they bring in the good student athletes. You buy his shirts because you're gonna need You know one. what? Yeah, this is a, this is what we call a three-shirt game. Uh, <laughs> our games are at night, so it's a little bit easier for him, but this is a 3.30, so I told him yesterday, I said, you better take at least three shirts. <laughs> Mario Cristobal, really a terrific uh, gentleman and we enjoyed meeting him this week. Uh, Pete, uh, the first Cuban-American uh, head coach. Uh, what a delightful guy. I mean, he has a plan. He says he took the plan from Coach Giano at Rutgers. The, he stole the blueprint, and that's what he's going to do at FIU. He's been very fortunate to work for Coach Davis and uh, Coach Giano, Coach Coker. So uh, he knows what he's doing. He does have a solid game plan, and uh, he's sticking to it. All right, let's see uh, what FIU can do. Pete, we appreciate you coming up. I know you have all sorts of duties uh, on this stat Saturday. Steamy Saturday. Coach now on the field, sweating it up. There's a nice push by the offensive line. Terrific run by Ahmad Ned, who's run out of bounds up around the 41-yard line. Good push. Based on that play, Pete, go raise some money. You got it. That's what we got to do. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, 22 Pete. yards. Thanks, Pete. Thanks a lot. Nice meeting you. Pete Garcia doing an outstanding job here at FIU. And so was the offensive line on that play. I like Ahmad Ned, Coach. Uh, he's showing me something. A hard-nosed runner. Big kid, uh, short in size, only 5'9", but he's stout at about 190 pounds. And big if they can get on the board. They need something good to happen on offense. Seven carries, 41 yards for Ned. Another Miami kid. Takes one way, goes the other, and he's still ticking to the outside. Gets wrestled out of bounds. Let's go to the studio on Mike Gleason. Well, Doug, we go to Ann Arbor. Uh, Chad Henney saying that Ryan Mallett, uh, when it's over, will be the best quarterback to ever play at Michigan. Here's his first collegiate touchdown to Greg Matthews. And Michigan now starting to open things up against the Fighting Irish, 24 to nothing. And uh, which was struggling more, Notre Dame's offense or Michigan's defense? Well, the Fighting Irish now still in negative yardage. Uh, also coming up, down in the swamp, Florida certainly not intimidated by Phil Fulmer's volunteers. We'll have all the top 25 scores and highlights. And Coach, FAU did hold on to win the game. It's all coming up at halftime. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> that was the big prediction this week. Trying to stay ahead of uh, Tom Luganville on inside the polls. Yeah, Lugans is uh, working that high tough. school game tonight on the U. Yeah, he's tough. Tough to play against there, but uh, I like Pete Garcia. I think they have everything in the right direction. Pete came in and really got rid of uh, several coaches on the FIU staff. Uh, and for baseball, for example, brought in Turtle Thomas, who was the longtime assistant at the University of Miami, then went to LSU with Skip Burtman and brought him back. And that raised a few eyebrows because Turtle doesn't necessarily get along with Jim Morris, the baseball coach at Miami. So Pete Garcia didn't mind shaking out. things up. FIU, that's their third and final time out of the half. FIU has burned all their timeouts with the football and trying to get on the scoreboard. Maybe your car is trying to tell you something. Maybe it's asking for the hard-working gasoline at Phillips 66, gas specially formulated to help clean fuel injectors in five tanks which helps you maximize mileage and reduce emissions. Give your car what it's asking for. Give it Phillips 66. Hard working gas. Are you the ultimate sports fan? Verizon and ESPN360.com challenge you to prove it. And the winner will drive off in this tricked out tailgating machine. Plus 25 grand and bragging rights to boot. Go to ESPN360.com on Verizon Surround and compete every day to be the king of fandom. And watch thousands of ESPN sporting events live online. Take the king of fandom challenge. Log on to verizonsurround.com slash sports today. Now get big arms, a ripped chest, and pay.
Cut abs with the Perfect Push-Up. The Perfect Push-Up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the Perfect Push-Up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees just like in a punch. All the energy of the push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. You'll be ripped in no time. Get big fast. Call right now for the perfect push-up. Call 1-800-543-0376. You're watching ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate. Hurricanes lead FIU 10-0. The coach, uh, Golden Panthers, certainly in two-down territory. Two downs here. You got to pick up this first down. You're the underdog. You need to score. Julian Reams lines up behind Wayne Younger. Reams looking for the push, and he gets it. I think he gets a first down. We'll check the mark. I think he's short. Tavares Gooden on the stop. He's short. You have to go for this. You're the poor underdog. You're the little guy. You're trying to play the big guy. You're trying to get a first down. He was short. Good job blocking a good cut. Quarterback sneak right here, maybe. FIU has done it mostly on the ground. Ahmad Ned is back there. Two tights, a couple H backs. Let's see if he can do it. Flag down. It is a first down. In fact, if he had to dove, he might have yeah. scoped scoop scoop off. May have got holding right here on Florida International. On Alajagian is number 50, and that's who was leading the block, and I think they might have caught Joe. Yeah. Alajagian. Holding number 50 on the yeah. defense. I mean, on the offense. Excuse me. That's a 10-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. Now you got a punt. Alajagian had uh, Joe Joseph wrapped up in a wrestling hold. Might have been worth a couple of points if he was wrestling. Penalties are really hurt to FIU. Chavez Grant deep for the punt, and he lets that one bounce out of bounds, and that uh, again goes out of the <laughs> one yard line. Two great punts, two of the best punts I've seen. Chris Cook, a 41 yarder, his last one was 54 yards that went out at the one yard line. That'll keep you in a football oh, game. Oh, Chris Cook, great kick. And that has been a problem area for FIU. We talked to Coach Cristobal, and he kind of chuckled about his special teams, said we continue to work at it. And that went just inside the pylon. And Cristobal thought uh, perhaps his man got blocked in the back. Cooper lines up deep in his own end zone. Gets it out to the one yard line. Don't forget, coming up tonight on ESPNU after our game, the Old Spice High School Football Showcase. It's number one, Miami Northwestern. They have at least 11 D1 prospects going against South Lake Carroll. And they are tremendous. Quarterback Riley Dodge. It's the Old Spice High School Showcase presented by State Farm on ESPNU tonight at 7 o'clock. Also tonight, late Hampton, North Carolina A&T, primetime college football presented by City at 10 Eastern. Find out more on ESPNU.com. All right, uh, let's check now. Uh, that's Orlando Franklin. A huge lineman, freshman lineman for the Hurricanes. Got rolled up a bit down by the goal line. Orlando Franklin, number 74. 
See what happens to him running back up his legs Ooh. back of his legs. Couldn't get him out. That's why the big linemen wear those knee braces in college. Like it's pretty much mandatory. Most uh, teams will make their linemen wear those big knee braces for that reason. Greg Cooper pushed back around the three yard line. See, here's where FIU, because their young team is hurt, because they can't stop the clock. They've wasted all three timeouts trying to get set up, lined up, don't have any timeouts. There have been teams, uh, players have made mistakes here in the first half, couldn't get lined up. Important plays, that's a young football team. They have been uh, pesky. I mean, they've gotten after it. They have. They? Like to get the ball back. Pitch back. Cooper. He'll be short of the first down. See, all this clock, Doug, is wasted because spinning those uh, timeouts early. Mario Cristobal has to like the effort so far. Offensively, they've made some mistakes that have really hurt them, especially in the penalty department. But uh, effort-wise, been great. No, oh, they played well. Young coach, 36 years young. Think he's pumped up or what? No return. The punt will be down at the 43, a 35-yard punt. 40 seconds to go. Still have some time to get in field goal range. If they would have had some timeouts, they'd have had over 240, 2.50 on the clock. Now you're stuck with uh, throwing the ball downfield. Wayne Younger's got to get some time back here in the quarterback position to loft one up and get one of his wide receivers to make a play. Wayne Younger certainly going through growing pains as the starting quarterback Penn State Maryland and now Miami pretty healthy schedule well that's picked off intercepted long return down to the 23 yard line Chavez Grant comes up with a big play for Miami and now they're in field goal range and here's the difference Miami has not spent any timeouts they have three left not a good job throwing that football by Younger under through it good coverage by Grant and now Miami in pretty good shape 43 yard return for Chavez Grant his first pick of the season showing some speed there all right we'll try to pick up a few more we haven't seen Lance Leggett yet number nine catch the ball James lines up to the right of Kyle Wright Wright with lots of time into the end zone and that was nearly picked off he was looking for Darnell Jenkins all right just did not throw that ball well Randy Shannon going to talk to him good protection by the offensive line just nowhere to go with it not sure uh, his thinking on that pass no, coach because no. there's nothing there he's pressing trying to make something happen get the ball to leg it all right the senior came in last week and we Replace Kirby Freeman through a touchdown pass. And late in the game, Freeman came back. Flag down, movement by Miami before the snap. Sloppy game. It has been sloppy. Lots of penalties. Prior to the snap, we have a false start. Number 76 of the offense. Five yard penalty, repeat the down. That's four penalties now in the Hurricanes for 30 yards. FIU has six penalties for 55. So a lot of laundry on the turf. <laughs> that will now bring a smile to Randy Shannon. Nice crowd on hand on this Saturday afternoon. Go 
back to the ground, and James goes to the left side. Gets harassed. Walk down to the turf at the 30 at the 27. Coming up in the third quarter, Coach Godfrey will be down on the field, and we'll get the coach's viewpoint. I know fans always say, boy, if I could just stand on the sidelines, the coach would attest. It's not a great we location to see things. Worst seat, worse First than Bob Buecher's seat at the <laughs> top of the stadium. Plus, you have no control. The uh, When you're on the field, sometimes your players will uh, be next to you or behind you, and all of a sudden, somebody's coming over there, uh, running back, and you can't get out of the way. Joe Paterno last year. Yeah, suffered that broken leg. Coach Shannon uh, looks like uh, I do not see the field goal kicker, Francisco Zamponia. Had a 45 yarder last week at Oklahoma. Still, still third down, they got okay. a chance yet to throw one in the end zone. Still time. Coach Cristobal has absolutely saturated that shirt. I'll look like that when I come back up here. <laughs> and look at his tie. Not as good a shape as he is. And the shirt will be wet. He really is a delightful uh, man to talk to and has a plan. Says he stole it from Coach Chiano at Rutgers. Will not deviate from that. The only difference, he doesn't fly down to get recruits. He just has to drive now to their house since he's in Miami and not in New Jersey. Kyle Wright. Flag down in the play. Using the area holding and Wright takes a lick. Could have run out of bounds, but he took a shot. Holding. Coming back. Sloppy play continues. And if you're a Miami fan, you, you hate to see this. That undisciplined play, lots of penalties. Oh, it goes against oh. FIU, a personal wow. foul. We spoke too soon. And again, we'll get the call from our referee, Jack Childress from the ACC. Personal foul, number 96 to the defense, hands to the face. The penalty is half the distance from the end of the run, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. That's we Jarvis Keenerton. Timeout, Miami. That's our second Peterson timeout. Does here. Yeah, I don't know about that. Jeez. I tell you what, guys fighting their panties off in the first half. It's football. Remember ESPNU.com. It's awesome for any kind of research you might have, uh, especially if it's recruiting news, uh, what's going on with your favorite team. Columns, video and audio highlights, podcasts, live streaming games, and a lot more. It's ESPNU.com. We're live in the Orange Bowl. This famous stadium, the last season it'll be around and they'll probably tear it down. Home of the Hurricanes and FIU. Doug Bell along with the coach, Mike Gottfried, will be on the field in the third quarter. Zamponia on for the field goal. 23 yards and it is good. He's two out of three on the day. The young man who has three degrees. Having a pretty good year kicking it as well. There's the halftime score. Hurricanes on top, 13 zip. Enjoy halftime, folks. Mike Gleason and the guys in Sports Center U Studios. You're watching ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate. And thanks to Sonny Crockett, Ricardo Tubbs, Miami Vice. Uh, they let us borrow their boat. Todd Coolidge, our producer, having some fun, getting some great shots. And our first half uh, highlights now early on. Miami had appeared to be in control. Kyle Wright going back with an Anthony Gator of FIU. And that was kind of the story for the Golden Panthers. They hung on. Defensively, they're pretty tough. But Greg Cooper had it going for Miami behind that active offensive line. The big guys are moving their feet, pushing people out. He stepped out of bounds at the two. And then a nice block by Derek Morse, big number 71. Greg Cooper in for the score. Tack on two field goals. And there you have it. Let's take a look at our first half numbers brought to you by Oxy. 
As you heard Coach mention uh, prior to the start of the game, he said Miami was definitely going to run the football behind that big offensive line, mostly all 300 pounders. 109 yards rushing. Kyle Wright, his first start of the season. Not great in the passing department. Two big turnovers for FIU. We're trying to do something a little different today on ESPNU. That's what we do on the U. It's called the Coach's Eye. You see the camera behind Coach Gottfried, who was a longtime coach in the sidelines. Coach, uh, is it bringing back memories? No, uh, <laughs> nightmares. But, he, but it's bringing back that this is the worst seat in the house right here. You're, all, everybody, your team, in the olden days, Doug, the uh, team used to sit on the bench. Now they stand all the time. So you really have a bad view here as a head coach. And there's all sorts of people in front of you. There's a... Yeah. It's just the way it is. All right, Coach, hang hang with us down there. I'll try to help you. I'll try to be your coordinator up in the okay. box, okay? All right. Distractions all around you here. And look out. Trying to call the game. Remember what happened to Coach Paterno last season. I'll be out of here. The microphone might get hit. <laughs> okay. Coach Godfrey can still move when the heat comes at him. There's the kick. Ryan Hill and Chambry McNeil fields it at the seven. And McNeil brings it out to the 25. McNeil replacing uh, Richard Gordon in the kickoff return area. And Coach uh, Kyle Wright, what would you tell him as he runs onto the field? Yeah, he's not played well. I'd tell him to relax. He's got to look for his receivers. He's got pitch and catch. He just got to take more time. He's forcing things. He's lost his poise a little bit in the first half. He has to be patient. James is in the backfield. Javaris, Greg Cooper really had a pretty good first half for Miami. Then Kyle Wright, lots of time, dumps it off to James. Gets up close to the first down. Nice game there, coach. See, that's an easy pass for Kyle Wright because gets the ball to James, makes him uh, work, and gets him the ball in space. So a missed tackle, it's a big play. But I. I on the sideline right here, you get a better feel in the game of the game than you do up in the press box. There's some positives in the press box, which I'll go over in a little bit. There's that 4-3 look for FIU. Pitch back to McNeil, who returned the uh, opening kickoff in the third quarter. Flag down. That was thrown uh, by the referee back there, Coach. Usually in the area of a hold. Yeah. Can you see those holds down there on the sidelines? No, you can't see anything. Uh, what you <laughs> what you do is look and try to follow the ball. What happens in the press box? Now that's a better seat up in the press box. They have people charting every play, every we have a defensive foul, front. First pass, 64, the offense, 15 yards previous spot. Repeat the down. Defensive front of uh, Florida International. Then they checked the linebackers, the secondary. They got down the distance. And at halftime, I'm sure they went over all those numbers from the press box. Remember, in the press box, it's quiet. You can think. Down here, a lot of distractions. FIU has done a lot of blitzing today. This certainly is in a blitzing situation. Don't you think they'll drop people back, Coach? If they got two safety, two safeties back, they're going to be in zone. All right, Coach. This is your view for the whole play. They are in that zone. Kyle Wright nowhere to go, so he runs with it. Fumbles the football. The FIU gets it, Coach. They got it. That's what you need if you're a young football team. You need a turnover. I'm sure Randy Sander. Randy Sanders went in, uh, Randy Shannon went into halftime and told these guys, hey, we're better than the FIU. You need to go out and show it. And they have not played very well. Lionel Singleton comes up with it. That was that zone uh, look that you spotted there, Coach, and Kyle Wright had nowhere to go. No, now they need to challenge the defense right now. Sudden change, you're always looking in sudden change who steps up on defense now. You need to shut them down right now. Let's see what FIU can do. They squander these opportunities in the first half. Ahmad Ned lines up behind his fullback. Ned behind the fullback, behind the right tackle. Gets positive yards. Nice push there by that FIU, FSU, or FIU offensive line coach. Good push, Doug, and uh, 
They need to come away with some points on this uh, drive. Preferably a score, a touchdown. This is where uh, Ned is pretty good running back, but Younger is going to have to do something with his feet or his arm right here to throw the ball or take off, scramble, and run for some uh, big yards. Second down and six. There's Ned. They're keeping it in between the tackles, Coach. Yeah, they're they're thinking about four down possibility because all of a sudden they feel like this is a great break in the football game for them. I'll tell you, Doug, it is hot down here. These guys are really uh, have to be in good condition because the heat down here is amazing. Now, Coach, when you were actually on the sidelines and you were talking to your coordinators, your offensive coordinator, what is he telling you right now? He's telling you down in distance what he suggests you make the call. Third down and four. Looks like a nice spot for a draw play, Coach. That's what I'm telling you. Uh-oh. You know what happened? They snapped the football, and he was not ready. Needs to throw the ball away. What a mistake right here. He was not ready for the snap. The center snapped the ball too fast. He almost thought like it was not a play. They got lucky here. Pick up the face mask. And if you're Miami, you don't feel like that's luck. You feel like they really a poor play out of your defense. Again, Coach Gottfried is on the sidelines. If you just joined us on ESPNU, it's the coach's view from the field. The other thing you can do, Doug, fast. is as a head coach or a coach down here, you can communicate with the, the officials. The you can give them love down. or you can get after them. Are you going to get after them after that call? No, I, th I think it was a good call. Randy Shannon's not upset about the call. Upset about his defense. Not playing with the motion right now. And once again, we'll get the coach's perspective of the play from field level. That's what Randy Shannon sees. That's what coach maybe, sees. Maybe a fade right here to Ellington. 82. Ellington is lined up in the lower portion of the screen or the quarterback's left. Man-on-man -man coverage on the outside. Stick to Ned. Goes forward. They're working the clock. They can still get a first down without scoring. They have to get inside the one-yard line. I'm going to say this, Doug. I do not think they can score running the football against this defensive front. And there's Mario Cristobal. And coach, the one thing for sure on that sideline, you work up a sweat, don't you? Oh, you do. You earn your money. All right, coach, what are they calling here? What do you think? What do you like? I think they're going to keep it on the ground. They're trying. No, they got Ellington again split out. I think they may throw him the football. They got a bust right here. Yeah, that's See, what they did. You're right. Hinn couldn't get back. He was supposed to be back. We have a timeout. FIU. First well, young football team half. calls another timeout. In fact, they burn their three timeouts early in the first half, early in the third quarter. Timeout, FIU. Are you the ultimate sports fan? Verizon and ESPN360.com challenge you to prove it. And the winner will drive off in this tricked-out tailgating machine. Plus, 25 grand and bragging rights to boot. Go to ESPN360.com on Verizon Surround and compete every day to be the king of fandom. And watch thousands of ESPN sporting events live online. Take the king of fandom challenge. Log on to VerizonSurround.com slash sports today. Hello. Mrs. Anderson, this is Mark Brown. I'm from the collections department. Of Hi. Listen, I'm sorry I haven't made my payment yet. I'll, I'll, I'll get it in as soon as I can. Maybe you should call in charge. They'll work with you and come up with a solution that's right for you. When life hands you a little more than you can manage, call In Charge Debt Solutions. We're a nonprofit company that puts people back in control by helping them manage their debt. We'll stop the collection calls and we'll help lower your interest rates so you'll have one affordable monthly payment. Call In Charge today.
thanks to its styling, technology, and fun-to-drive performance, it's no surprise owners rank the Nissan Altima the most appealing mid-sized car, according to J.D. Power & Associates. Now, get big arms, a ripped chest, and cut abs with the Perfect Push-Up. The Perfect Push-Up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the Perfect Push-Up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees, just like in a punch. All the energy of a push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it, to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle-building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. You'll be ripped in no time. Get big fast. Call right now for the perfect push-up. Call 1-800-543-0427. Clouds have moved in over Miami here at the Orange Bowl. Hurricanes hanging on now, 13-0 FIU in scoring territory at the 11. Let's go down to Coach Godfrey, get the coach's view. Coach? Doug, I think they're going to throw a flood route to the right side. All three receivers try to get three receivers in an area. Flood the zone. That's what they want to do before the tight end in motion. That's what they did, Coach. It's completed out of bounds inside the five. John Ellis, the H-back, on the receiving end. Good call, coach. They moved Chad Ellis, number 27. He's the guy when he's in the backfield. Usually he's a blocker and a pass receiver. He's not, uh, not going to run the ball much, but he can hurt you out of the backfield. This is a good drive right here. They need to finish it off. Third and two for the first down. Third and three for the touchdown. All right, Coach. I think uh, they're set up here for a run with you Ned. Pound Ned. You got to pound Ned. Here comes Ned. They pounded him, and he gets pounded. Thrown for a two-yard loss. That's Bruce Johnson and Tavares Gooden. Gooden has had a huge game. Both come up with a stop. Uh, good and stepped in the uh, play. They also expected Ned to carry the football. I think this is a good call by Cristobal trying to get points on the board right now. His defense is playing better. Offense had a nice drive, aided by a penalty, need to field goal. 24 yard, Chris Abed, one for one this season. And it's two for two. Abed connects FIU on the board, 13-3. Coach, good drive following the turnover. Good drive. They got the turnover. Kyle Wright with a big mistake. All of a sudden, the enthusiasm. You look at Miami's sideline right now. They're kind of shocked uh, with what's going on right here. Not a lot of emotion on the other side of the field. These guys are fired up. You came to FIU to play against Miami. That's what you drawn you to that score. And his, this is a young football team giving a great effort. Hey, Coach, we see Cristobal wearing the headset. Randy Shannon not wearing a headset all the time. Cristobal obviously wants to hear all the communication. Randy doesn't want to hear it all. Why? No, a lot of head coaches want to be free of the headset. They want to be free to be able to make decisions on big plays. Some head coaches coach Steve Spurrier, offensive guy uh, uh, out on the coast. Uh, I think about a couple guys uh, that call the plays, but most head coaches make the decisions about punting, going for it on fourth down, those big calls. Good look at Randy Shannon there, coach. Uh, and again, no headset at all. As a defensive coordinator, he was in the box. Now he's on the field. That's a transition. Sometimes you make a mistake not having a headset on because all of a sudden you leave it to your coaches, but you also leave the win and loss to the coaches. So I'd, I'd like to see the head coach with a headset. That's McNeil from his own end zone. Hesitates momentarily, then fires out of there. Gets up to the 28-yard line. And we'll reposition Coach Godfrey, get him in position. Let's go to the studio with Mike Gleason. 
And let's go out to Seattle. The Buckeyes have scored and regained the lead against UW. Brian Robinski, a big time play for six. Robinski goes 68 yards. Buckeyes 10 7 over the Huskies. Doug? All right. Good look there. Watching Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet predicted a very close game. In fact, I think Coach Corso uh, predicted a Washington victory. Or no, he didn't. He picked the Buckeyes. Very close. That's right. Lively showing Lincoln, Nebraska today. That's Javaris James over the right side. He's wrestled down. And a flag down on the play. We've had a lot of flags in this sloppily played game in the Orange Bowl. Hurricanes have a short week. Get ready for Texas A&M on Thursday night. Coach Shannon and company, uh, they have an opportunity now. And the Oklahoma game was last week. It's behind them. If they can get things Holding. together, especially offensively. The offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. They have an opportunity to make a run here. We're getting Coach Gottfried in position. Down on the other side of the Miami bench and Coach Cristobal continues to work up a lather on the sidelines. He was on the Miami sidelines last year when the fight broke out here at the Orange Bowl and you can see him in the video out there trying to pull kids off the field. And when Pete Garcia one of his first uh, duties here at FIU he wanted to hire a new football coach and that was the man he went to without hesitation. First down and 20 for the Hurricanes. Kyle Wright has had an up and down day, given off to Javaris James. James goes forward. Mike Dominguez with the tackle. First on the team and tackles Dominguez, another Miami kid. All right, Coach Gottfried, you've moved a bit down the sidelines. Better point of view now, Coach. Nobody in front of you. Better point of view, but the band is right behind me, so my hearing's going to go. <laughs> And I used to think that was such a great vantage point if you're the head oh, coach. Terrible, terrible. Look at this. I mean, all the people around here. Just a uh, bad, bad spot. Second down now in 13. Kyle Wright. They continue that zone coverage. And he's having trouble finding open receivers. Takes it down. Nice gain. Reginald Jones, junior out of Tallahassee with a stop. Hey, Doug, you're right. They've played a lot more zone here in the second uh, half. And Kyle Wright looks like a quarterback that's got beat up the first week. And then last week came in uh, off, off the bench, played well. He looks like a quarterback that's looking to the sideline. You know, Coach, he doesn't appear to go through his progressions. Uh, he looks at one guy, and then, uh, then he takes off to run. We'll see. Certainly a bit confused. You're right. What do you think here? They, they got to throw the ball. They got to get a crossing route. Got to get a big play. They're going to run. And a nice gap for Javaris James, Ashland Parker on the stop for FIU. First down, 11 yard pickup. Best of the game so far for James. You know, Doug, when you asked me that I'm so quick, but they ran the ball, if you remember the first half. They started this football game with James and pounded this offensive line, pounded the defensive line. I think that's a good move by Patrick Nix getting back to the run. First and 10, James back there again, right from the shotgun. Has time, has a man in the scene, first down Miami. Darnell Jenkins, he's been a go-to guy, wide open, coach. When, when you go to the zone now, you're gonna give the quarterback more time and there's gonna be windows that you find in the zone. Darnell Jenkins ran a skinny post right there and he hit him right on the money. This is a big drive for Miami. They gotta take control of this ball game. They wiggle waggled around here. They haven't really given the effort that you figured they'd give today against this young bunch. That was a 28 yard pickup. Coach's view again from the field. Right, flush out of the pocket. Get out of there, coach. You okay? Coach Godfrey had to dodge that one. Didn't want to wind up on the uh, disabled list. All right, haven't heard from coach. Uh, he'll get rewired. He 
dropped the mic over there. Hey, coach, I see you. You're okay. Reminded me of the old days, sir. You got to get out. You got to run. That was a flat, bad flashback, huh? Bad flashback, but uh, if Joe Paterno's watching this, he, he has really a bad flashback. <laughs> All right, let's go to the field level one more time. Again, it's second and long. Whenever they line up at the gun coach, it's a pass. We haven't seen the Could draw be a much. Draw here. here it is. James breaks free. Lowers his shoulder and gets down inside the 10-yard line. Alonzia Phillips on the stop for FIU. Finally, they go to the draw, 21-yard pickup. Doug, that's a good call by Patrick Nix, Joe Panunzio, the offensive coaches, because all of a sudden you said the same thing FIU was thinking about. Spread out, all of a sudden it's going to be a throw. It's a draw with James. I really think I'd turn it over to my offensive line right here, and I'd say, hey, we got to knock them out right now. Run the football. Run to the right side here, the three technique. Coach's view, that's what Coach sees, that's what Randy Shannon sees. James over the left side. That's good tackle. That was Dominguez. good tackle. Boy, I like Dominguez, he's active, isn't he? Boy, he is, he, he really, if you replay that, he really read that from the start. When you have one back, there's a lot of, not a lot of misdirection unless your quarterback's gonna fake to the one back and roll out on the naked, but they have not done that today. Coach, it's hot down there. Those big linemen from Miami, they look to me like uh, they're they're a little uh, out of breath right now. They're used to this, though. I mean, it's always hot in Miami. December, it's this hot. <laughs> again, from the gun, the last time they were in the draw. Yep, same play over again. James gets uh, thrown down. Good hustle there by the FIU defense. That's one, Doug, you would like to have your quarterback check out of because all of a sudden when they, when they went back to one safety, when they have two safeties on the field, it looks like deep, it looks like zone coverage. When they have one safety, it's a man, it's a blitz. They blitz right into the run. All right, Coach, here we go, third down. I'm still waiting for Leggett. Now let's see where Leggett is. Probably on the bench. We got four They're wide. Four and two. Mm -hmm. Here comes the blitz, coach. They picked it up right into the end zone. Oh, and out of bounds. Wait. Ryan Hill, out of bounds. Out of bounds. This is a win for FIU again on defense because you're forcing an offense to kick a field goal. All right, here's the look, Coach. You don't see it from up top. He had him and just threw it out of bounds. That's such a timing thing, and it was off just a little. Both feet out of bounds. All right, so Zamponia on for the field goal. 27 yards. Missed his first attempt. He's hit three more. It's 16 just to three. got shot down here. Look out for the cannon, I forgot to tell you. Yeah, I know. You forgot to tell me the most important part. Coach, come on back. We'll get you. You're safe in the boot. Coach Godfrey, back up. Look out for the cannon and the orange ball. When you're ready. They're banging the drum slowly here in the Orange Bowl. Hurricanes on top now, 16-3, the third field goal of the day for Francisco Zamponia, young man from Naples, got his sixth year of eligibility restored by the NCAA. Says all he ever wanted to do was kick for the Hurricanes, and now he's finally getting the shot and doing a great job. And now he'll kick off a short kick. Fielded at the 16 by Alonzia Phillips. Lost the football, and I think FSU, FIU got it back. Let's go to the studio, Mike Gleason. How much of the uh, Buckeyes taking the lead in Washington? This is exactly what Tyrone Willingham did not want to see after this. Curtis Shaw coughs up the football, and then Beanie Wells, Chris Wells, the sophomore. Look at the left side. Nobody there once he hits the line of scrimmage. Takes it in for the score. It's now 17-7 Buckeyes on top of UW. Doug. All right, Glee, thank you. Lots of action going on. Already some uh, upsets. Mississippi State knocks off Auburn. Oh, brother, if our Alabama beats Arkansas tonight, 
Tommy Tuberville will be getting some serious heat. First and ten now, Wayne Younger has had his troubles today. Oh, great play there. Ahmad Ned breaks free first down up around midfield. Kenny Phillips saves a possible touchdown. 18 yards on the carry. Let's look at it from behind. Watch the hole open up. Wow, big way. Good blocking up front. You saw Alajagian, who almost got away, who got, certainly got away with a hold. So FIU in business, their best uh, play so far today in between the tackles with Ned running hard, and they go back to him again. Dodges a couple of tackles, gets some help from his quarterback. Younger on the block, nice game, but flagged down. And that'll come back. Joe Joseph on the stop for the Hurricanes. Unfortunately, that will come back. The spread offense installed by James Coley, the new offensive coordinator. Under Don Strock, the old regime, it was more of a pro-style attack. Traditional fullback eye formation. And check out Younger. Block in the back, number 85 of the offense. That's a 10-yard penalty, previous spot, repeat first down. That's Eric Kirchenberg, the tight end, called for the block in the back. So unfortunately for FIU, that negates a solid run by Ned. Coach Gottfried is now back up in the booth. Coach, uh, you're earning your money today. Slow elevator. I stopped to get a hot dog. <laughs> the elevators are slow at the Orange oh, Bowl. They're slow. No wonder they're turning them down. And I'm not so sure sometimes they're going to actually open. <laughs> Younger with the carry. And Younger continues uh, his learning curve. Continues to grow because every snap he takes, he gets better and better. Coach, we mentioned James Cole, the offensive coordinator. This is a totally different offensive spread under Don Strock. It was more of that pro-style attack. It takes a while to, to learn the spread. It takes a while. Young players, and here's the key. I can stop by and got a hot dog on the way back. Not for you. Just Not one. for me. <laughs> it took forever to get a hot dog. Yeah, things are slow here at the Orange Bowl. Uh, and not all of the uh, concession stands are open at the Orange Bowl. Younger over the middle, and that's intercepted. Flag down on the play. Kenny Phillips, nope, it bounced on the ground. Yeah, it took a hit to Younger, got hit, belted. Well, Coach, what about uh, the experience on the on the field? I know you almost got taken out. The yep. cannon almost got you. Right. Other than Can that, did you like it? Cannon, the band, <laughs> I hear he's bad. Uh, and... Uh, the, the seat on the sideline, your view, is not very good. You need the guys upstairs. Like when you ask, what would you do here in third and three? You need you can't even see how Only many yards you got. Right. Of the offense, that penalty is That reduced. will go against FIU. So, again, penalties are just killing the Golden Panthers. And there's that. Uh, there are the coaches on the sideline. Yeah. And I want to go back to... Not Here's sure that, pass. Yeah, that, that was a close play. They're not going to check it, though. But last year, when you can see, when Larry Coker was on the sideline, Don Strzok, when all of a sudden you may be looking at your play chart and a fight breaks out, you have no control. Third down and 20. Gets thrown for a loss. Let's check in with Mike Lee in the studio. Tennessee, Florida, down in Gainesville. And Doug Eric Berry, ESPN's 150 number one rated cornerback last year. Pick. Super T Eric Berry, the true freshman, picks this one off and takes it to the house. So much for Tebow picking on the true freshman, huh? 28 20 now, Florida. His leads cut to eight. Looked like he was staring down the receiver. Well, big mistake for Tebow. Really the first one he's ever made in a Gators uniform. And it's 28-20. And again, another nice punt by Chris Cook. 43 yards, no return. He has been a valuable weapon for Mario Cristobal and the Golden Panthers.
Maybe your car is trying to tell you something. Maybe it's asking for the hard-working gasoline at Phillips 66, gas specially formulated to help clean fuel injectors in five tanks, which helps you maximize mileage and reduce emissions. Give your car what it's asking for. Give it Phillips 66. Hard-working gas. Tuesdays on ESPNU, take a share in the summer house. All right, boys. Welcome home. As some of the country's best freshman football players live under one roof. Get over the line, bro. What they'll face will be tougher than any two-minute drill. Running out of that tongue. Unbelievable. With the season coming to an end, don't miss another day oh. in the summer house. Well, that was definitely an experience just to look around the stadium. Summer house, Tuesdays at 9 on ESPNU. Presented by Oxy Acne Solutions. Attention. Now get big arms, a ripped chest, and cut abs with the perfect push-up. The perfect push-up works with the natural rotation of your arms and shoulders to maximize results and minimize stress on your body. With the perfect push-up, your hands, arms, and shoulders rotate 90 degrees, just like in a punch. All the energy of a push-up is captured and transmitted right where you want it, to the muscles. There's no wasted effort, just muscle building movement. And as your arms rotate, you feel it work in your biceps, your triceps, your chest and abs, and your shoulders. Invented by a U.S. Navy SEAL and made with steel and a ball-bearing movement, it's the push-up perfected. So here's the deal. The perfect push-up is only two payments of $19.95. When you order, you'll receive two perfect push-up rotational handles, and you'll also receive the Navy SEAL-inspired perfect push-up workout chart. You'll be ripped in no time. Get big fast. Call right now for the perfect push-up. Call 1-800-543-0376. K.E., what's up, man? Your boy, Coach Cristobal. Bro, love you, miss you. You're a strong, strong man, strong as I've been around. Keep the faith, keep working hard. You know you're going to be back on your feet in no time, and I can't wait to be there to see you do it, man, okay? All our prayers are with you and always will be. Get your butt down here soon. Coach Cristobal, the tight ends coach in Miami, and the first uh, player that he coached was Kevin Everett, uh, the Miami Hurricane now with the Buffalo Bills, who we've been following his... Uh, Recovery this week, and thank goodness it appears that he's going to be okay, Coach, at least from the perspective that he will walk again. It's great. Here comes the blitz. Kyle Wright goes deep, has his man open, and the receiving end, Lance Leggett. There's Leggett, Coach. You've been calling him the whole game. Any answers? 80 yards. That gets him excited, George. Yeah, Lance Leggett has great speed. Didn't even run track. Went out the ACC track meet, won the 300 intermediate hurdles. But he's been having trouble catching the deep ball. Zamponia with the extra point. Looks like they found themselves a pretty good kicker, and I think they found themselves a speedy man on the outside of Mr. Leggett. Yeah, good call against the blitz. Good protection for Kyle Wright. Hangs the ball up. Leggett running those hurdles down the corner, down the end zone. Score. Kyle Wright says that's more like it. You see this offense. Uh, there's a lot of potential. You see it improving as they get ready for the meat of the schedule? I, I think they have to improve a lot here in the second half for a and because a and defense not very good. Their offense is very good. Jaborski Lane, the big uh, running back. Stephen McGee, the quarterback. But a and is going to be a much more uh, a better football team than the FIU. They need to get some confidence on offense. And that will help that long throw to Lincoln. Well, it's good to see Kyle Wright with a smile on his face, a young man who uh, has really taken a beating over his four years as far as the publicity. Just happened to be the quarterback when they had a couple of down right. seasons. And it's good to see the young man uh, smile after that connection. Lonzia Phillips deep for FIU. with Lloyd Moss. Well, 
goes nowhere. Field at the 24. And going down immediately. Nice special teams tackle there by Eric Houston. See the future stars of football on ESPNU later tonight. Number one, Miami Northwestern against number two, South Lake Carroll. It's the Old Spice High School Showcase presented by State Farm. That's coming up at 7 o'clock Eastern tonight. 11 D1 prospects in that Miami Northwestern team. South Lake always good. To find out more, log on to ESPNU.com. A lot of speed in that football game. A yeah. lot of guys will be playing for Miami, FIU, Florida State, Florida, Florida Atlantic. And if you just dial in, you'll think it's a college game. It's going to be a pretty fast-paced high school game. That's Ned over the right side. I like the way Ned is running, taking some licks. Kenny Phillips and Calais Campbell. Campbell back in there making the stop. You asked me, Doug, about Miami's offense. That one play, Kyle Wright to Lance Leggett, is took one yard drive, took 12 seconds off the clock. That's what they have to do because they got a good offensive line. They got a good running back, stable. They need a long pass. They need some receivers to step up. Randy Shannon. Really into this football game. Ned breaks a tackle, gets a first down. Hard running by Ahmad Ned. Kenny Phillips was there for the tackle. Ahmad Ned might be one of the better guys we've seen this year. He's really uh, came on late in the game against Maryland. Gave him a spark and has gave uh, this offense a spark in this football game. 12 yard pickup. We're live at the Orange Bowl in Miami. It's Florida International and the Hurricanes, FIU and the U here on ESPNU. Doug Bell, Mike Gottfried. Flags down everywhere. We'll wait for the call, and obviously, FIU jumped the gun a bit. Prior to the snap, small start, offensive line, five yard penalty, repeat first down. Xavier Shannon is at right tackle, wears number 55 for FIU, and he is the son of Randy Shannon. And there he is. You know, it's interesting when Randy Shannon got the job at Miami, he called his son as they always do, and they talked. And Xavier said his dad never mentioned once that he got the job. They said goodbye. He went and turned it on ESPN and saw it on the crawl. Called his dad back, said, Dad. And that tells you a little bit about Randy Shannon. Said, son, I didn't think it was important. Ned over the right side. And he gets swallowed up by Eric Makur. I like this defensive front by Miami. They're active. Another thing is hurt FIU is the penalties. Xavier Shannon, six foot tall. Very athletic kid. He's played every position over his three years here, every position in the offensive line at FIU. Pretty versatile kid. I'm sure his dad doesn't even know he's in the football <laughs> game right now. There he is staring it down. That's the eyes of Randy Shannon. Boy, those eyes will stare right through you. They'll put a hole in you. That's the end of the third quarter. Kyle Wright connects on the 80 yard pass play to Lance Leggett. And Francisco Zamponia adds a field goal as well. FIU trying to hang in there, but the U flexing their muscles in the Orange Bowl, leading it 23 to 3. Number one. Another wild one. Uh, that's what you expect, Tennessee, Florida. They've been involved in some crazy games over the years. So it's 23 3, Hurricanes on top. Wayne Younger and company, quarterback draw. The big spread offense of James Coley, who actually worked with the Dolphins last year. Nick Saban was offered a job to go to Tuscaloosa, and he's a Miami guy. He decided to go to work for Mario Cristobal, and as he told us earlier this week, Coley 
He grew up three blocks from here. Yeah, he a uh, kinesiology major. And <laughs> being the offensive coordinator for FIU, but he said every day was like a clinic with uh, Nick Saban's staff. Everybody is very knowledgeable and uh, really worked hard. Yeah, Coley working with Wayne Younger. You see his passing numbers. Can't uh, throw. Uh -uh. Third down, flag down. And he takes a shot. That's going to be a penalty. And that's a late there hit. Too. Calais Campbell apologizes, but that happened after they uh, blew the play dead. I think the tight end started too quick for FIU. Out of the snap. False start, 85 offense. It's a five yard penalty, still third down. Well, it didn't call the penalty. Right tight end, number uh, 85. Moved too quick. And yeah, we'll check that. Uh, Eric Kirchenberg. Penalties have been a disaster for FIU. Ten, really has kept them. Ten penalties, 83 Eight, yards. Really, in key spots. Third and 13. Younger keeps it himself. And it'll be a punting situation for FIU. That's what they think of their uh, pass offense. All right, we had the coach's view. How about the band director's view? This is what the band director sees, coach. Got a better view. Yeah, and see, he even gets to swing around, and now that's a terrible view. Great view of the band, but that, I wouldn't pay for that seat. No. You know, a lot of coaches want to press box in the end zone. They, that way, they can see the line split, splits better and it's a better spot. Again, a nice kick by Chris Cook. Got it away, Greg Cooper. Fielded it, wiggles his way out of the tackle. And gets out of bounds up around the 27. We'll be back to the Orange Bowl for the final 12:57 in just a moment. Kane's on top, 23-3. Good morning, NFL fans. It's Dick's Sporting Goods Fan Friday. So suit up with authentic Reebok NFL apparel and show your true colors. Every Friday this season, be prepared for fierce rivalries. Use every drive, every bump and run to go the distance. Wear your team out with authentic Reebok NFL apparel. Dick's Sporting Goods Fan Fridays. You have to be here. For a girl like her, falling for a guy can be a little dangerous. This Friday. Now? Not now. Get ready for a shocking good time. Good luck, Chuck. Rated R. In theaters Friday. Extreme power of Energizer Lithium, the world's longest lasting AA battery and high tech devices. Energizer, keep going. Now, Life Alert can also protect you in a fire emergency. Whether it's fire danger, a serious fall, or other type of emergency, Life Alert is there for you. Thanks to Life Alert, you can live alone without ever being alone. And that's why I wear one. All senior citizens should have Life Alert. Please call 1-800-914-6100 for free information about Life Alert or visit us on the web at the address on your screen. Tuesdays on ESPNU, take a share in the summer house. All right, boys. Welcome home. As some of the country's best freshman football players live under one roof. Get over the line, bro. What they'll face will be tougher than any two-minute drill. Running out of that tongue. Unbelievable. With the season coming to an end, don't miss another day oh. in the summer house. Well, that was definitely an experience just to look around the stadium. Summer house, Tuesdays at 9 on ESPNU. Presented by Dick Sporting Goods. 
You're watching ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate as we look at downtown Miami at Stone's Throw from this historic stadium. And they're deciding what to do with this uh, old gal after the season. What, did they tear her down? Uh, there's talk maybe the Florida Marlins ought to build their stadium right here on the spot. And the Marlins, I don't think, really want this spot. No. So this place uh, could get torn down, never to be heard from again. And when you think of all the games that have been played here, historic Great games. Wow. Tradition. That's a first down for Miami. And the new tailback in the game is Charbery McNeil. 17-yard pickup. Fast guy, McNeil, Joe Penunzio, one of the coaches telling me about him last night. He has great speed, highly recruited guy, but you can see this defense is worn down. They've been in the field a long time. They've uh, been worn down by these big bodies of Miami and also the Heat. McNeil again lines up behind Kyle Wright. Looks like they have two pretty good running backs. This would be their third tailback. Let's go to the studio and Mike Gleason. Well, Doug, uh, UCF in Texas. Kevin Smith, 217 yards in the win over NC State. Smith trying to keep them in the game with the Longhorns here. Yeah, Smith is a second-team Conference USA runner last year. Tries to dive in, but steps out on the one. Scored on the next play, though. 23-17, Texas on top, Doug. All right, Ooh. look out for Central yeah, Florida. Central Florida beat NC State early in the year. Open date last week. And new stadium debuting today. George O'Leary certainly changing uh, the culture of that program. Left tackle for Miami jumped. Jumped the gun a bit. Reggie Youngblood. You know a game tonight, I think, Doug, could be a big snap. upset. Ball start, 77 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. It's still second down. I think Hawaii could go down tonight. At UNLV. Yeah. I think they could go down in their hopes for the BCS bow. Uh, I think UNLV is pretty good. Hawaii's been here all week. So I, I think it's a possible upset. They played at La Tech last Saturday. When they come to the mainland, they just stay here for two yeah. straight weeks. Second and 12 for Kyle Wright. Great protection over the middle. First down, Darnell Jenkins. Boy, Kyle Wright, uh, 37 yards, looks solid on that one. All started with good protection. They protect him, give him a chance to find the seam in the zone. Darnell Jenkins right there with a good post move. Good catch. Here's a blocking by the offensive line. Unobstructed view and ball to Jenkins. Let's we'll see if Kyle Wright can pad his numbers now. Still lots of time to play here in the fourth quarter. James back in a tailback. Wide, wide open in and out of the hands of Jarrell Mabry. It's been a big weekend so far for the Sun Belt Conference starting last night. Troy beats Oklahoma State at home on ESPN, no less, and then Florida Atlantic. Defeats Minnesota. FIU will go down today, but uh, those are the first two wins of the year for the Sun Belt Conference. Yeah, it's a big win for Troy, and you can bet one thing. The Big 12, they're not going back to Troy. Missouri went there a few <laughs> years ago and got beat. They will not schedule. And that's it for the Big 12 going to Troy. All right. Will keep it himself, looking for some help. Takes a hit, gets inside the 10-yard line. He wasn't going to run out of bounds. No, he's showing a little uh, determination here. The the four quarters better for him, Kyle Wright. Listen to the popping here. Linemen, linebackers, defensive backs, defensive linemen, they like to see their quarterback be a tough guy. Not a stupid guy. Oh, there's a time to go out of bounds. Exactly. Now, if he throws one more touchdown pass today, he will tie George Myra for 10th place on the Hurricanes' all-time touchdown pass Myra. list. Yeah, 
76 jump that time for the Hurricanes. Uh, they've had some false starts. Chris Rutledge in there. That was prior to the snap. Delay of game. Number three on the offense. Five yard penalty, and it's still first down. So it was a delay, yep. not the jump. George Myra, he probably played in the 50s, late 50s. Mm -hmm. A little, yeah, it was a little later than that because I know he, he played in the old, uh, played for the Birmingham Americans. Yeah. New Saban may have been his coach down here. Talked to George a couple of years ago, uh, still lives down here. Into the end zone, and that is picked off. Mike Dominguez. Well, he's had a, a nice good game. Uh -huh. He really is Doug. You're so right here. This guy's all over the field, Dominguez. Good against the run, drops back in pass. He's excited. Now, FIU's not going to win this game, but they won a lot of uh, admiration because they're fighting. Look at that interception. Tipped the ball, brought it in. Kyle Wright really tried to force it in there and just wasn't wasn't open. Kyle Wright good strong arm. Dominguez really made a good play. So here comes the by you. Ahmad Ned back in at tailback. He has had a quality afternoon. Miami kid. He has something to brag about. Throws it away. Incomplete pass. He's chased out of bounds by Colin McCarthy. There's Dominguez. Look at that hairstyle, coach. I like that. Oh, Don Eagle. <laughs> he used to be a wrestler. Um, younger didn't get helped by his wide receivers. You wide receivers have to run the direction the quarterback's running in. They didn't do that. Younger continues to struggle as he goes through this maturation process. Penn State, Maryland, and now Miami. Keeps himself, takes a good lick, but picks up five yards along the way. When you look at their football team, 68 freshmen and sophomores, underclassmen of the 93 guys they have on their football team. Total yards are a little offsided. Last week against Maryland. They have 270 yards, but as you mentioned, Coach, their defense has been on the field all day long. The pass to Ned. Breaks a couple of tackles and gets a first down. Ahmad Ned. Randy Phillips on the stop. As bad as their offense is, they rate above Notre Dame. <laughs> now that's a heck of a statement. It is. FIU's offense is better than Notre Dame. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm not sure Notre Dame has a tailback as good as Ahmad Ned. They have a score. Tavares good in the senior middle linebacker for Miami. He's had a big day. Still in there, along with McCarthy. And there's a tackle by Tavares Gooden. You know, he finally got the start this year, his senior year, good out of Fort Lauderdale, St. Thomas Aquinas, which, as you know, Coach, uh, good school. it's a good school, a lot of recruits every year, and he said he gets emotional when talking about his career because uh, so much was expected of him. And, in fact, he it draws tears to his eyes, but he's excited about the opportunity, and he's hoping this senior year will be a big finish for him. Stay healthy and have a great year. Miami's had some defensive linemen. You think about linebackers. They've had Jerome Brown, Cortez Kennedy, Warren Sapp. How about those guys? Reeves in the backfield. Younger has a man open, and it's complete. This could go all the way. 
Bernard Turner, touchdown, Florida International. No flags. 65 yards. Quarterback threw up that time. He threw the ball right on the money. Younger with a good throw, and again, you're looking for things to build your program on. This is one of those. Good fake right here, steps up in the pocket, good release, ball good spiral right on the money for the score. And if you're on the other side, Miami, that's not good to, to happen. Extra point by Chris Abed is no good. Abed misses that one. Turner's first touchdown of his career, the redshirt freshman from we Miami. Have immediate timeout on the field. We for have Wayne a Younger, his second touchdown pass. Way to go, young man. Many more to come. Huh? ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Hey, coach, check out that guy. That's making me tired by the Sandcastles. Wow. Wow. He's in shape. That's how you get girls. I guess so. I need to spend more time at the beach Just doing those push-ups. He may not be real smart, but he's in shape. <laughs> well, that was a five-play drive, 80 yards, just over two minutes for FIU. Only their second touchdown of the season. One thing we've seen uh, is Abed gets ready to kick off special teams for FIU, even though they missed that extra point, has been better today. Big time problem area going into this game. Shawbury McNeil gets the playing time in the second half, and he goes down at the 22. Good coverage again. All right, once again, this guy's still on the beach as the sun goes down. I mean, sooner or later, he's going to get tired, don't you think? Well, there's nobody else out there. There's a guy on the chin up right there, but where are the girls? <laughs> they trying to impress each other? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, you stumped me. Mario Cristobal continues to work extremely hard along the sidelines. Off. Goes to Greg Cooper. Haven't heard from him in a while. Justin West on the stop. Mario Cristobal says he's following the blueprint of Greg Schiano at Rutgers. So the only difference is that he doesn't have to jump on a plane now to recruit the Miami area. And he says if LA is big enough for UCLA and USC, Miami is certainly big enough for Miami and FIU. What do you think? A chance. Certainly a lot of talent down here, and so many schools come down and invade this area. Again, jumping the gun, Miami will have a procedure penalty. A lot of tradition at USC and UCLA. You have to build that tradition. That's good. That's good. Prior to the snap, ball start, 84 of the offense, five yard penalty, it's still second down. And that goes against uh, Richard Gordon. When you're, when you're the AD now, it's like the uh, president and owner of a pro football team. You're on the sideline. He's sweating right down there with us, team, because he knows brighter days are coming. Garcia worked at the U before taking the job at FIU. And he's overseeing the construction of a brand new stadium, which will be open next season. All right, on the sack, I drove over to the school today, Cody Hellisher on the stop, and it's a gorgeous campus, FIU. But they got some work to do in that stadium. It's not that far along. A lot of steel girders and dirt. The coaching connection, Cristobal played at the U. Bernard Clark came from Central Florida back to Miami, now working at FIU, and he was a great player. Popovich on down the line. The Miami FIU connection, there are so many crossovers. Third down and 16. Right, 
Looks deep. That could be picked off. Falls incomplete. Let's go to Mike Gleason in the studio. And Doug, we head back down to the swamp. The Florida Gators looking for that exclamation point now. I'll tell you, Percy Harwin puts fear in any defensive back's heart. Lots of speed for wow. a nice touchdown run there. Inside out, spinning, 42-20. Gators on top, Doug. That is speed, personified, huh? Yeah, and tough to beat down there. I thought Tennessee had a shot to beat them. Yeah, they ran the ball so well. Florida's young defense. But in that atmosphere, with all that speed, so many weapons at Tebow's disposal. Randy Shannon still has not cracked a smile. Ball start, 59 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still fourth down. Well, the reason he's not smiling is because he's got a lot of problems on this team. A lot of penalties. Let's see if FIU comes after the punt. Matt Bosher will try to get it off quickly. And here they come. Just got it off. And that ball will be down at about the 49. So FAU, FIU, when we come back, will have excellent field position right at midfield. Not over yet. At least that's what the Golden Panthers are saying. 521 remaining in the fourth quarter at the Orange Bowl. The U leads FIU 23 to 9. Doug Bell along with Mike Gottfried on this Saturday afternoon. Hurricanes looking to go two and one. And FIU more than likely will fall to 0 and 3, but it has been a challenging schedule, as you might imagine. Penn Good State, days Maryland. Ahead. Yeah, I, I think so. I think when you have your own on-campus stadium, I think that just makes I think it's the alumni, the students, everybody fired up. Everybody is a part of it. Everybody has ownership. Ahmad Ned. Next to Mr. Younger. Loses the football. Nope, gets it back. Calais Campbell gets the sack. The All-American candidate. Mel Kuyper thinks a lot of this young man. Of course, the Orange Bowl has been the site of so many thrilling games, really just historic games. Check that out, the end of the Orange Bowl. Miami will go to Dolphin Stadium next year. They're refurbishing Dolphin Stadium. It is going to be unbelievable. FIU goes to the new stadium we spoke of, and the last game in this facility will be in December when FIU plays North Texas. Younger. Picks up seven yards. Spencer Atkins, Carlos Armour on the stop. Wayne Younger really takes some shots. When you run that quarterback draw, you pick up eight, nine yards, you're going to trade it for a headache if you're a defensive player. Good hits right there. Offense is better, but they need to find a passing game. Throws in double coverage, and that is incomplete. Carlos Armour was there in the stop, and Armour is a guy. You saw 27 on the stop. Tore his ACL in 05. Had a bad hamstring problem last year, and then when he finally got to play, he was suspended. Got involved in the fight against FIU. And he had a foot injury in the spring, so finally he's healthy. Yeah. A lot of things wrong with him. Made a good break on this football. He's a young man out of Memphis, Melrose High School. Once you get a guy, you can get some other guys there. It's a high school. When you go out of state to recruit, you need to get that first young man. He's happy you'll get some more. Fourth down. And Younger got his signals crossed. Looking for Jason Frierson. Let's check in with the studio, Mike Gleason. Doug, the Buckeyes and Todd Beckman starting to flex their muscles now out in Seattle. Yeah, Beckman throws a nice ball, post route, Bryant Hartline. Where's the coverage at? Disappeared that time, 27-7 now, Ohio State by 20 at Washington, Doug. 
Where's the coverage? The Eve Israel. Where's the that? <laughs> well, that, that was a big game. Uh, if you were watching Chris Fowler and Corso and Kirk this morning, uh, they felt that was a real big game for the Big Ten. Ohio State could not go out there and lose to Washington. That was big for the conference. Do you agree? I missed miss a show, but I agree with that. Tavares James taking a shot from Scotty Bryant. Michigan with a big win today. They still have the goal of winning the Big Ten. Still not completely down, but they faced an offense that's not spreading you off today. Notre Dame more of a conventional quarterback, not a running quarterback. They've had problems with running quarterbacks. Michigan could win the Big Ten. You heard it here first. All right. Second down and 12. James, show those quick feet. Gets wrapped up and brought down. Big Audric Adger. Let's check in on the ACC standings. Our game next week at 3.30 Eastern will be Maryland well, at Wake Forest. You guys have a good game. Yeah, should be good. Maryland now with a loss after they lose to West Virginia. Charles Arbuckle, the big man, will be back next week, back in the saddle. Took a week off. Uh, he's got those bad knees. Nate needs a week to recoup. Yeah, you know, Coach? He'll be back. Tell him to go on the field next week. <laughs> he may do that. <laughs> in fact, uh, he might get involved in the action. He may want to take it a step further and go on the field. You know those former players are. All right, so FIU, big number 91, Armand Willis. Got nicked up a bit. See, he's really grimacing underneath that face mask. He's got a broken uh, bone or two in his hand. You can see the big wrap. Timeout. FIU, that's their second timeout of the half. Panthers uh, call timeout. Coming up on ESPNU, it's the Old Spice High School Football Showcase. Number one ranked Miami Northwestern will take on South Lake Carroll. And if you want to see two of the very best high school teams loaded with Division One prospects, dial in tonight, 7 Eastern on ESPNU. Miami Northwestern, I have not seen South Lake, but they are unbelievable. Hampton takes on North Carolina A&T. Charlie Neal and company will have the call of that game late on ESPNU, all presented by City. So Randy Shannon will go to 2-1. and one. Short work week, coach. A really short work week because you have AM coming in here on the 20th. So you have to get ready for that football game on Thursday. AM with a powerhouse offense going to test the Miami defense. On the other side, I'm not sure Miami's offense learned a lot about themselves today. Shannon was Still have some issues. Yeah, outstanding player at the U. Uh, his roommate, Michael Irvin, the playmaker. He played for the Cowboys himself, Randy Shannon. Third down, Kyle Wright has gone the distance. Completed pass to Darnell Jenkins. First down, Miami. All right, coach, next week, who's in hot water, Charlie Weiss or Tommy Tuberville at Auburn? Well, Charlie Weiss has been in hot water, so all <laughs> so, of a sudden it, he's going to get in more heat. But his offense, you know, genius when you have the genius label on you and and you come into the uh, Notre Dame, everybody expects you to lose some games every now and then, but your offense to be good and the offense is bad. Tommy Tuberville and Al Borges, the offensive coordinator, are going to get a lot of heat this week. As far as James still in there, we'll check uh, James' numbers here in just a moment as he uh, gets close to the century mark. So the U trying to bounce back after that humiliating loss in Norman, Oklahoma. How do you grade him today, Coach? Uh, see, uh, I've not been impressed entirely with their offense. Too many mistakes. Not a lot of good, crisp 
throwing and catching running games there. I like the offensive line. They they have some things to work on. Defensively, I like the front. Uh, linebackers, secondaries played well, but just not a lot of concentration for four quarters. James gaping hole. Flag comes in. The back judge. And that'll wipe that run out, perhaps. Tell me this, you, as wide open as the ACC appears, uh, I think we'll know more when Boston College plays Georgia Tech. Can Miami contend for the ACC title? Yeah, yes, I think they can. I, I thought you said earlier that you like FSU to improve, and I think both these teams are needed by the ACC to be a good conference and to get two teams in the BCS. 85 the offense, illegal block below the waist, the crackback block, 15 yards, previous spot, repeat the down. You have to have Miami and FSU good. James, 17 carries, 81 yards, and these penalties uh, has really lengthened this game. It's been really sloppy in that sloppy regard. Sloppy game, hot game, sloppy game. Both teams. As a coach, though, how do you how do you fix the penalties? Well, you just got a concentration. Uh, you have to have that out of your football team. You have a typewriter effect. Uh, everybody's making a mistake at different times. James with 81 yards, trying to build on that. It's it back in FIU territory. Dominguez, another tackle. He has had just an outstanding game for the Golden Panthers. Look at Mike from Miami. We have a timeout. Just a second We have a player. charge timeout. FIU. That's their third and final timeout of the 58 game. 58 players That's on both sides. Timeout. All went to 18 high schools in the Miami area. That's how many mm -hmm. crossovers there are. That's that's amazing. A lot of great football in Miami and the state of Florida. And everybody comes down here to recruit. That's why FIU thinks. They can build it up quickly. My question to you, though, Central Florida is pretty good. South Florida is outstanding. Really good. Can you have another good program in Florida with the big three, Central Florida and South Florida? Can FIU jump in there, even think, Florida Atlantic? I think you can, but you have really have to schedule Miami, FSU, Florida, South Florida. You have to play those guys because that's the only way you're going to beat them in recruiting. You're not going to beat Miami uh, Sun Belt team, Miami on recruiting. What you're hoping is Miami makes some mistakes and you can get some guys and project some guys to play. Cristobal, the man who's trying to, you don't want to say rebuild the program. This is only the sixth year they've been in existence, and Don Strzok uh, built it from scratch, uh, but uh, he certainly has work cut out for him. He's got his work cut out for him, but he's got an AD that believes in him, hired him, he'll give him the resources he needs. An AD and a president that certainly believes in him. And coach, uh, you know what that's all about. You gotta have you gotta, gotta have the have two big AD dogs on your side. Yeah. And you gotta look for them when things get tough that they're still on your side. Some some of these guys, they're on <laughs> yeah. your side, but when the things get tough, they head out. Yeah, they don't answer the phone anymore, no. do they? No. But that's not the case at FIU. As you look at Pete Garcia, who's he on the phone. The phone. Uh -huh. Pete didn't have a mustache last year when we saw him. Different look for Garcia. Mario doesn't have to work out today. He has gotten a workout, about a four-hour sauna here at the Orange Bowl. And the putt. Almost got it. Always tipped. Fair catch, Greg Ellenson. 40 seconds to play, and that'll be it. He's teaching this team. Oh, he's used all his timeouts. He's teaching them to play four quarters all the way through. Well, he has got his work ahead of him, that's for sure. But he learned from Shiano at Rutgers, who went through some really lean times there, and now is uh, enjoying the fruits of all his hard work, and an AD and a president that believed in him. Right, and uh, a good recruiting area up there because he has New Jersey, which has a lot of great high school football, and then snuck down here in Miami and Florida, grabbed some speed and took it back up in New Jersey. So uh, a good plan. 
see what Wayne Younger will do in the final 40 seconds. Ned is in the backfield. Younger will take off, cut it back. Nice run. Up to the 42-yard line. Bruce Johnson on the stop for Miami. 24-yard pickup for Wayne Younger, redshirt freshman. Long season to take as many hits as Younger has taken tonight. Need to throw some of these footballs. They're still trying. They're not trying to kill the clock. Younger fires it for another first down. That's Jason Frierson, his first grab, another Miami kid. Colin McCarthy ran him out of bounds. So Miami's first team defense still logging a lot of minutes, a lot of action out there. And we mentioned Tim Walton, the defensive coordinator. First year, although he was the DB coach in Miami, worked with Randy Shannon. Before that, with Nick Saban at LSU, and he was at Syracuse. So Walton now, this is his defense. And you see Randy with no headset on, not calling any defense. Six DBs in the game for Miami. See the receivers aren't helping him. Young receivers, they have to move upfield, run to the side your quarterback's rolling to. And that's it, coach. Miami has defeated FIU, the end of a two-year contract. Miami says they'd have no openings until 2013. So who knows, maybe this is the last time these two schools, which are separated by 11 miles, will meet. But nevertheless, good sportsmanship today, much better than last year. Yeah, and they should play again because this close, you can save money on the bus. You don't have to fly to Minnesota to play or out to California. They need to play here. Cristobal knows all these kids, recruited many of them. As you can see, uh, and look at his face. This meant a lot to him today. And FIU goes down to the U. What a spectacular day and hot day it has been in South Florida. Our final score for the Orange Bowl, Miami 23, FIU 9. Coming up, we take you back to our Sports Center U studio for an update of scores and action around the country. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Mike Gottfried and our entire ESPNU crew, I'm Doug Bell. We'll say so long from Miami. Time now to send you to our Sports Center U studio and Mike Gleason.